Hello, 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 hello. It is Wednesday. Another day, another stream, another Wednesday, another week, another year. Everything comes over and over again. Hope you've enjoyed your Wednesday so far. <clears throat> Today we're going to solve a problem. We're going to solve a riddle that we've talked about over the last few weeks, actually, probably two weeks or so. Definitely last week, but I, and I think we also talked about it two weeks ago. Um, that is um, in regards of a shader that Yanis wanted to create. And he told me he had some problems and I said, you know, if you can't figure it out, <laughs> if you can't figure it out until, uh, until next week, so this week. Then uh, we're gonna try it ourselves. <laughs> so today's the today's the day. Today we're gonna create a procedural, no, not a procedural, a um, a yeah. I mean, it's not really procedural, but it's you know fully created in Blender, a digital clock shader. Let's go to the summary. Hello, hello, hello. hello. As you can see right there, we have two topics as always. First one being the 30 minute quick sketch and then the next one will be the digital clock shader. If you only want to see one of these two, there you go, one of these two, um, you should see uh, in the timeline some timestamps. So um, depending on when you watch this, if you're watching it live, of course, you're not going to see it. But if you're watching it later, then you should find a, um, a timeline. I mean, some timestamps in the description and also in the timeline. So you know exactly when we start with the a digital clock shader. So, of course, as, as I said before, or disclaimer by, you know, right now, I'm not a nodes expert, but I think I have a concept and I have an idea on how we, we could create a digital clock shader where we can also rotate between all the numbers. So now it is time to see if we can do it. Um, I think I'm more confident in this project than the geometry geometry nodes project from yesterday i didn't really have a big plan for yesterday's project but i still wanted to create you know so the idea was to create a flower and i think we succeeded quite well so today we're going to go into another project another quick project which will be the digital clock shader um i wonder if you know one question that i still have for um geometry nodes is it still feels weird to use um to use a surface for the uh, the flower we've created basically like a funnel that creates the shape of the flower and then we've added petals to the flower which then creates the flower um and then also some some small pieces in the middle um but i wonder if you can do that fully without any geometry or you know, if you can delete the existing geometry or just not use it and just add a new one, which we can, which you can then use to create the flower. It is probably possible, but um, I'm too dumb or I'm, I haven't really looked into geometry nodes too much that I could uh, possibly know it. Maybe we'll do another small project with geometry nodes at some point, but um, today's not the day. Today's node day. Today's shader day. <clears throat> if we have some more time, if it doesn't take too long, then I also had the idea to um, maybe look through um, how to create a, how do you call it, like a, a, what, like a, like a 3D effect for shaders, so that you can, like, oh, a parallax effect for shaders. Um, it's probably, probably, pretty complicated but if we have some more time um then we can look into it maybe we can even create like an illusion as if the the numbers are a little bit underneath like some sort of glass plane or whatever but we'll see about that we'll see first of all we're gonna create the 30 minute quick sketch today we're gonna have something very interesting let's see how far we can get with this uh with this quick sketch my idea was to create a minotaur today's quick sketch number 150 so I wanted to do something pretty cool, pretty epic. So I decided to create a uh, to create a dinosaur, dinosaur, wow, a minotaur, minotaur. So um, that's gonna be today's quick sketch. 
we'll see how far we can get. Um, yeah. Let me just create a the last quick sketch folder of June. Tomorrow, July begins. Quick sketch, which also means I should probably at some point create another um, another compilation, but. <clears throat> It takes so long to do that, <laughs> and I'm debating whether or not I should do it. <laughs> Maybe I'll take some like a week off again, do it then. I don't know, because um, I don't really know if I have enough time to do it. If I just you know go to work, but we'll see. Let me grab my graphics tablet and then we can start. Ah, there you go. There it is, the tool to create whatever you want. Okay, perfect. So. I of course have some references, otherwise, um, you know, that would be just some blob in the end. I actually want to create a miniature and not just some sort of, you know, trying to create. This could be a fun video actually, or a fun um, idea. Basically, you know, thinking of an object like a, um, I don't know, like a, like a, like a miniature, for example trying to sculpt a miniature without reference and then afterwards going with reference and seeing what the, how, how different it looks. Just to kind of see, you know, how much uh, how much uh, better it'll be. And also maybe even looking at after you've created a miniature with reference, maybe even creating another, another one um, with, yeah, with that in mind, basically by after knowing what you know after seeing the reference creating another one and seeing if that is even you know if that is better than uh, the one with reference and the one without just to kind of compare the three <clears throat> um yeah let me see the settings here right so we can start sculpting there you go we need dynamic to pull j detail size nope 20 there you go we also need symmetry, mirror, and there you go. Woo, there you go, we can start. Okay, perfect. So a miniature, of course, is a combination of a of a bull and a human, which means um, we have kind of a mix between both. We not only have uh, you know animal anatomy, but we also have human anatomy. So this will be interesting, especially kind of tying the, the head together with the body because the body is you know a human body and humans usually have like a pretty thin neck as i've seen it um bolt not bolts miniatures have quite thick necks their head is more like forward um just kind of you know take that bull neck that that bulls usually have to hold up their head the huge head you know keep that in keep that in in, in the human human anatomy or in the miniature anatomy so we'll see how that looks in the end um yeah okay let me see do i need to change anything i don't think so i think we're ready to to create the minotaur so time is ready hopefully you are ready as well i am ready the reference is ready blender is ready so i would say three two oh hold on something's not ready the recording there you go okay now everything's ready three two one go there you go. Okay, let's go. So first of all, of course, I need a head shape. I always start with the head just because, in my opinion, it's easier to start with the head than anything else and then walk off of that. Of course, if I create a full body, then that's a little bit different just because um, for a full body, I kind of want to make sure that all the, I guess, proportions are right before I really go into detail with anything, which also means that I don't really work on the head before I have the full body, I guess, laid out, <clears throat> which is always helpful because then you can at least you don't have to worry about um you know sculpting and at the same time anatomy which is always you know why would you why would you want to you know care about two things if you can only if you can also just care about one uh so yeah i decided to only care about one <laughs> at the same time okay we have the big nose in the front hold on i have some more references i have three to be exact just to kind of have different angles. One I have just for like a miniature concept art, one for front a front view of a bolt's head, and then I have another one for the uh, side view. That's usually the reference that I gather, that I collect. Just because, you know, 
having all these is, um, in my opinion, the best way to create any characters. Especially if it's only for quick sketches, then you don't really have to care about, um, you know, references or, you know, anatomy. Like, 100%, of course, you still want to create it, like, you know, make it look good. But um, you don't really need to create it fully perfectly. So you can kind of only work with two references. If I really want to go into detail and make this like look really, really good, I would probably go with even more, like having one for the uh, three-quarter view, maybe even one for, I don't know, just a few more, just to kind of see different angles, just to see different features a little bit more in detail. All that stuff can help um, create a better outcome. But for this one, of course, it's just a quick sketch, so we don't really have to go into too much detail here. And of course we have to, we, I also want to create like sort of a little bit of a, of the body. I don't want to spend too much time on the, uh, on the head. There you go. The mouth, I don't really have a good reference for it, So I'm just going to put it over here. Maybe make it angry. We could also make it open, but, um, I don't know if I want to. Yeah, we, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. So I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to just add another one back like the the jaw basically probably uh, over here there you go okay that's the upper mouth piece part whatever and then we grab this one with the mask brush and mask out the bottom mouth part the the jaw there you go let me go in here invert it grab the uh, snake hook brush and pull it out it's supposed to be pretty big because it's, he's supposed to scream. So we can, so we probably need to kind of um, pull it further down, and then we have to just pull the whole thing down a little bit more, like this. That's probably better. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, <laughs> this jaw is kind of split, so we need to bring back some geometry here. There you go. That's better. Smooth it. Trying to undestroy what I've just destroyed. There you go. Okay. Let's go to uh, the lower mouth region. We have a jaw as well. I'm just, I guess, the the side view is quite low res. So I'm kind of just guessing some of these parts, like the jaw shape. It looks like it's similar to a horse, but also just similar, not perfectly, you know, the, the exact same. So, um... Yeah, just kind of, you know, going in here and trying to get it right. <laughs> Might not be the best option or the best idea, but, you know, I guess I think for this piece, it's uh, good enough. There you go. Okay, let's uh, go in here into the eyes. Just make those a little bit more refined or give them, you know, eye holes so we can put in the eyes later. We can put this closer together like this. Okay, that looks pretty good already. Let me go in here and actually probably add a neck roll soon. We can probably add the horns later, but I want to create the, the horn base pretty early. There you go. We need it later, so why not add it now? Probably make it wider as well. There you go. Yes, exactly like this. Perfect. Look at it. <laughs> okay, let's uh, combine these pieces here a little bit more. There you go, perfect. Okay, let's go to the neck now. The neck, of course, as I said before, is kind of like a mix between a real bull and like a human head, a human neck, which is kind of a weird com combination because a bull's neck is so big that it's kind of hard to really put those two together. But we'll try. So I guess we can pull it further back first. He has to have a huge neck. I also want to use not the grab brush, but the snake hook brush. To kind of really pull out more geometry like this. Perfect. I also need to make it wider. Really, really wide because it's a bull. He has massive traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth it out. Perfect. Pull it out some more here. And then we have uh, the shoulders as well. So we need even more geometry over here. There you go. Okay. We need some more for the shoulders. There you go. Perfect. Okay. We probably need some more in the back as well, but we can do that now. So yeah, let's bring back some more here. 
itching my back <laughs> while working. Efficiency to the max, there you go, okay. Just maximizing the uh, the trap muscles here. There you go. Going to the front as well, to the collarbone like he, right there, and then connecting to the traps as well. There you go. Okay. Let's go to the to the shoulders now. We have the shoulders right here. Of course, just sketching them in, not really making them perfect, but uh, good enough. We can maybe even make them, maybe, you know, kind of. Maybe, maybe we can even add some arms here, but we'll see. There you go. Pull them further back here, maybe like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I need some more back here, so we need some. I'm gonna grab some more geometry from here. Oh, there you go. Snap back. There you go. We need the collarbone now, because the collarbone is kind of important, <laughs> as you can imagine. There you go. Perfect. Make a huge collarbone, because this this animal is huge. This monster. There you go. Perfect. Make this smoother. Just trying to really even this out some more. Okay, perfect. So now let's kind of detail the neck some more. First of all, what we need is the uh, the rotation muscles for the neck, which are right there, going all the way to the ear. Wait, where are the ears actually? Oh, they're there. Okay, I can see them. There you go. They get quite thin in the middle, so we kind of have to watch out for that. We also need some more, you know, of the neck right here, connecting the neck to the head. There wasn't really anything like that before, so it's about time to add it right here. It actually goes quite far forward. Not too much, but I think even for humans, it's even further forward. Just because our head isn't really like a meter long. <laughs> but, you know. Um, for this one, it's actually quite long as well. Okay. There you go. We have the rest of the neck, which will be right here. Uh, let me add some more over here. Just a little bit like this. Perfect. Maybe add some more volume here. That's the good part of uh, that's the good thing about uh, having a side view as well. This way you can really see the front view as well, which can really help kind of uh, looking at the shape and seeing if you where you at the new geometry. It actually helps instead of just putting it in there and hoping that it helps. There you go, we could probably also kind of create a sort of, um, what is it, a uh, bone structure here, the spine. Maybe that might be too crazy, but we'll see. Putting that in there first. Okay, so now let's actually maybe bring some of these uh, pecs back here. We can see we kind of pull the collarbone back down, so I'm going to pull it back up. There you go, we can probably grab the snake hook brush to pull it down, it's easier. Not making it too big, because then I'm just pulling down the collarbone, which is exactly what I not want to do. There you go. Okay, let's uh, define this chest a little bit more. Okay, we have 19 minutes left. Perfect. That should be plenty of time to really finish this. We'll give it some detail, maybe even just a little bit. We don't have too much time, of course, but I think we can we can do a little bit at least. There you go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go into the neck. We need some more stuff here in the neck. So I'm going to make this deeper here. There you go. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's add some uh, chest muscles now. First of all, I'm gonna kind of make the uh, front shoulder a little bit wider. 
like this so that I can now grab it and create some some shoulder muscles going all the way to the middle of the chest right here like this not too many just a little bit kind of give it some more definition here maybe making these shoulder parts a little bit stronger as well giving them some more volume because it's a huge monster with huge muscles strength has to come from somewhere so uh, why not increase the the size of the muscles There you go. Maybe even more. Uh, we'll see. There you go. Okay. Okay, I think this part just look, looks kind of weird, so we have definitely have to pull it back a little bit more. And then probably also kind of change the muscle structure in the back. It's not perf looking perfectly anatomically correct, but we can do that uh, soon. I want to look at the front first. The chest look is looking kind of weird right now, so I want to add some more volume to the chest now. Giving it some more room, I think that's pretty good. And then uh, adding some more volume here. First of all, we're going to define the chest, I guess. Going all the way from over here into the middle, like this. Okay, now we need some more volume here. Definitely more volume, we have basically nothing. So now, just piling on these, these clay strips should really help establish a nice uh, muscle structure and also a nice, you know, volume, I guess, structure. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Looking pretty rigid. <laughs> we could probably smooth it out so it doesn't look perfectly completely lean. Would probably look better on uh, like a minotaur. Just because I don't think minotaurs are very particu particularly lean necessarily. They're more bulky. There you go. Okay. Smoothing it out. There you go. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We need some more over here. Just a little bit more, filling the gap a little bit, smoothing it. Okay. Good. Let's probably, we can probably do that with all the muscles now. Now that we have kind of like a muscle structure going on. We can probably smooth it out a little bit. There you go. I want to define the... Uh, oh, we can smooth this out as well. There you go. We have a nice beginning. Let's go to the uh, collarbone. Can I define this some more? Maybe make it a little bit weaker because it's quite strong right now. And then just putting it in here. We have the uh, collarbone ending right here. Is it right there? I don't really know exactly. I don't, I don't really know exactly where it stops. But I think it's right there. There you go. Okay. Let's go to this piece here. Making this a little bit more refined as well. There you go. Going all the way up to the ear. We need an ear as well. So let's put that in now. I think I also want to make the head a little bit more massive. I'm going to make it wider first. There you go. Okay. Uh, should we put an ear in now? I don't think so. I think I want to work some more on the wrist before we do that. Okay. Yeah, let's work on the head now. The head is pretty rough. So I want to have some, have some more detail on the head. Let's see. First thing first, I think the eyes look too close together. So we need to, I think, generally pull the head more apart. There you go, that's better. So we need to pull this closer together. Not too close. More like this. There you go, now we're getting somewhere. I also want to pull this lower. This looks more like a screaming mouth than a, I guess, what do you call it? Like a 
yelling mouth. <laughs> Let's say that. Make it more extreme. Okay, I think their mouths are actually pretty, I guess, quadratic. Quad like a, like a, you know, like a cube. They have some corners in their eye and their, uh, in their mouth. There you go. Okay. Let's adjust the nose a little bit. The nose looks kind of weird. Refining the nose shape a little bit. It looks pretty, pretty rough. They have quite a, quite a, you know, cube-like nose. <laughs> Everything on them is more cube-like, I guess. But that's, you know, what you should pick up when you look at the reference. Exactly how it's built. How they're built differently, you know. There you go. Okay. I think the nose is too wide. I need to make it smaller. I think, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. Not too much, just like this. Okay. Then let's add some more, you know, some more mass over here. I don't really know what I do here. I just, you know, it's the same with the horse that I've modeled. I don't really know why I add more, I guess, more volume over here. It just kind of looks like there's more in the reference. So I add just more and it kind of looks okay, I guess. go okay nice forehead really massive forehead as as it's uh, supposed to be and then we can probably make this a little bit slimmer okay then we have the ear as well I'm probably gonna need to pull the the horns a little bit higher more like over here, but then you should pull this high as well. There you go. Let's add some ears now. We have 11 minutes left, so that's perfect. The ears are kind of, I think, in front of the uh, the horns, actually. So over here somewhere, right over here. There you go. But not underneath the eyes. So I think the eyes need to be lower. <laughs> but the forehead needs to stay the same size. Okay, this looks kind of weird. Hold on, <laughs> this looks weird. Maybe the ears, uh, the eyes just need to be smaller, I guess. No. First things first. What I want to change is I want to increase the bridge over here a little bit more. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Perfect. Maybe even going into the eyebrows, like over the eyebrows over here. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it there. Okay. Trying to make it look angry, of course, because it's a minotaur. It's supposed to uh, protect whatever it's uh, protecting. There you go. Trying to look menacing. Okay, the ears now are pretty deep into the head, though. I think that isn't really the case. But uh, the, the cheeks look kind of too wide as well. I'm going to pull those back in a little bit more. That's definitely better. I think we need to pull this close together as well. That's better now. We need to do a few more adjustments probably over here. Let's add the the ears now right over here. Okay. Grab it and pull it out, of course, as always. Good old ears. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Not too big. Like this, maybe. Yeah, that should work. Smooth it out. There you go. Alt M. Okay.
making it here. Now we're kind of creating the, uh, the ear shape because right now it just looks like a you know like a flap of meat, I guess, hanging off of there, off of its head. Creating the ear shape now, which is pretty simple for a for a uh, bowl. We have to make sure that we're not grabbing the other side as well. So I'm going to go to front faces only. I activate that so we don't grab this side of the of the surface as well. There you go. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, let's smooth this out here. I want to make this a little bit sharper, so I'm going to use the crease brush and kind of use the secondary function, which is add some more detail or add some more geometry or basically making it sharper. There you go. Creasing it out. <laughs> the re reverse creasing it. Oh. We have seven minutes left. Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay. Uh, are the ears too big? I think so. Let's make them a little bit smaller. That's probably better. I also want to remove some of this volume right here. Smooth it out a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Smoothing it like this. And there you go. Let's create the horns now. The horns are very important, of course. So let's, uh, you know, put them in. Shouldn't be too hard. Just kind of shaping this into a round horn-like base so we can pull it out easy peasy and pull, oh, pull the horn out of the base. Pretty big like this. And then inverse, grab, oh, we have some more over here. Let's remove this. There you go. Uh, grab the snake hook and create the horns. What should the horns look like? I guess we could create like um, the. Oh, okay, yeah, that looks cool. I like this. So of course, oh, hello. They need to go forward first. Probably gonna go from up top here because then I can kind of create the layout better. There you go. That's the usual horn shape. Then we can pull it down a little bit over here. Maybe over here as well. And then pull it back up. Trying to make this horn a little bit wider, maybe like this. I don't want to, you know, cover the the head too much, but I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's go back in here and kind of add some more geometry here, because uh, the base needs some more to kind of, you know, hold these uh, horns in in place. There you go. Over here as well. There you go. That's better. Okay, maybe we can now even not use um oh yeah let me quickly save this this has uh, been going on for too long that to not save it quick sketch day 150 let's go in here and what do i want to do i want to increase the resolution let's set it to 50 so we can you know work on some more detailed stuff like uh the fur and maybe some um smaller shapes here there you go maybe we should also bring in some some uh, teeth but we can do that uh, in, in just a second let me just quickly uh, you know detail the mouth a little bit more right here we have probably the two sides right here no he actually doesn't have two sides they have like a connected middle part 
not like a dog for example dogs have kind of like this um split middle piece on the nose or two pieces actually similar to humans actually if i think about it humans also also have two pieces but you can't really see them because they're kind of you know under the skin and the skin smooths everything but for dogs you can see it very clear, clearly go oh hello now I'm just kind of trying to create a sort of like a fur shape but it's probably too big the brushes so we can have to go slower or you know lower in resolution but then we can't really add more geometry really or we can we can't really cover the whole thing so i'm just gonna probably care about the teeth more than uh the fur that's probably has more impact so let's add some teeth now right here probably pretty big teeth making it thicker there you go Okay, really exposing them because they're screaming, maybe even the lower ones more than the top ones. So let's uh, refine this a little bit more. There you go. Okay, let's add the tongue and also the teeth now for the bottom part. We have uh, 1 minute and 15 seconds left, so not that much anymore. <laughs> Time went, you know, goes by pretty quickly when you're uh, concentrated. There you go. Perfect. That's, uh, those are the teeth. Perfect. Okay, I think that's that's enough. That's enough. We don't have to really detail them too much. Just we keep it, that we can see them. And then maybe we can go in here a little bit more into the eyebrows. I think the eyebrow, eyebrows can have some more work here. First of all, I want to make them bulk here. Welcome back, James. Hope you've uh, enjoyed your Wednesday. Halfway through the week. Can only be can only get better from here. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, nine seconds. Hell yeah. I mean, we could probably add some eyelashes. I mean, some eye eyelids here as well. Just you know, kind of at least start. There you go. Okay, pushing them out some more. I think that's better like this. Yeah. Okay, kind of adjusting to the eye shape. Now we need some eyes. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's add some eyes now. And then we're done. That's the uh, minotaur. The, the horns aren't really that sharp, but you know, <laughs> we only have 30 minutes. So, you know, you have to make some compromises, make it smooth and use the good old mirror modifier, as always. Yeah, we didn't get to, we didn't get to the, um, to the arms, but I don't think it's a big deal. We couldn't really see the arms anyway. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's, um, 
make a photo. <laughs> Let's shoot a photo. I'm gonna pull that over here. Where's my, uh, there it is. Uh, go into rendered view so we can see what we're looking at. Of course, we have no lighting right now, so it's appended. Oh, a necromancer, oh, cool. What, uh, what, in, um, what type of way? More like that the, the dude itself is also kind of, you know, dying or, or, you know, like a skeleton, or is it more like a priest that then has some, I guess, voodoo-like clothing, <laughs> maybe? Be a modern necromancer. There you go. Perfect. Probably if we put the camera lower than him, we can make him look more intimidating. We can also probably pull it, hold on, over here some more. Yeah, that probably creates a better silhouette. Over here, that's probably pretty cool. Do you want to send me the, uh, the concept art? I always like uh, recreating, you know, 2D and 3D. I don't know why, but it always is really fun to me. I can't really describe why. <laughs> it's just, you know, trying to recreate something is, yeah, it's just, it's just fun. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay, let me grab a uh, quickly, like a small one as well. Before I do that though, I'm gonna rotate it more over to the other side probably to create some more structure on this side. Although, <laughs> okay, that looks weird. Hold on. Ah, I think that's pretty cool. Now I think this line is kind of irritating. Can probably work better on this side. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, I think I've never created like a, uh, I guess, well, sort of, I guess, but never really my own characters. I guess you could say, you know, the ogre, for example, or the dreams face, you know, the character I've done before that, um, but never really, I guess, without anybody else's ideas, you know, referencing those. But, you know, if you collect from multiple I guess people, then it's not really, you know, copying anymore or whatever. It's kind of your own character. Hmm. Probably just 100. 100? No, that's. Oh, that could work. Maybe 250. Oh, let's keep it at 100. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. Quite dark, but I think that's okay. Oh, we need the the shader as well. Yeah. <laughs> Just the... Uh, what is it? Um, what is it? Um, I can't... Res I can't... I can't think of the... the... the, the saying. Yeah, it's not. It's more, um, you know, collecting inspiration. You know, if you're not really co completely co copying it, then I don't think you can really say steal, because um, you don't really, you know, do the exact same. You just, I guess, get inspired or kind of, you know, look at the ideas of others to kind of formulate your own. Especially if you're not really, you know, concept artist kind of, you know, learn how to be creative and create cool looking characters. This way, <laughs> at least you don't have to worry about it be looking cool. You already have like an idea, which is of course what you should do anyway, if you want to create like a 3D character, um, creating, you know, 
to the concept art beforehand just to make sure that you know the visuals look good um but you know if you can't really draw then that's a problem so why not just use the concept art, art of others Yeah, and most of the time you can't really just, you know, convert it. You can't just say, well, now it's 3D. You actually have to think about the shapes and how they could work together, how the anatomy would look in that position. You can't really just, you know, say, okay, well, now this is 3D. You, you really have to think about the shapes and how they actually could look like the 2D version. For usually, for example, like... Uh, like a 2D concept art doesn't really show you the face really. Even if it's like a two third two quarter view, for example, you only have one one set of the face, and usually that's not enough to really see what the face looks like. So you can have you can have to yeah improvise or you know kind of figure it out yourself, which is the fun part. There you go. I think that's pretty good. That's a good shot. Where's the, there it is. Oh, we could make it black. Hold on. This looks pretty cool. Hold on. This looks pretty cool. Why does it look so... Oh, okay, well, this looks kind of weird. <laughs> what is this? I mean, it could work. It creates some weird lines, though. Let me see. Maybe if I dial it down a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. That's pretty cool, I think. Maybe we can make this a little bit grayer. Not too much, though. Like this. Uh, no, I want to keep it white, because otherwise there's just no contrast to the background. Or not, you know, enough. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Let's do the quick render. For the post-production. There you go. Okay. And hold on. There you go. And render. There you go. Okay. already done perfect it kind of looks like a um <laughs> like bread because <laughs> of all these sharp parts because they're black it looks kind of like bread because usually when you have bread it kind of breaks apart in the middle and then you have these spikes in the middle which kind of have you know very, which are very very brown that's kind of what this reminds me of <laughs> maybe we should invert it again hold on let me see what that looks like i don't want to have a bread uh minotaur yeah i think that's better maybe we could pull it over here some more not too much yeah that's pretty cool i think that's acceptable okay yeah we don't want to have a bread minotaur okay Let's do the final render. Hold on. There you go. Before we do that, of course, post-production, adding a glow. Where is it? There it is. Uh, yeah, two probably. That's still too much. Three. And then of high. Four. I think the light is so close to the surface that it kind of makes it so strong. But I think that's pretty good. There you go. Set it to times 8, 256, 100% resolution, and there you go. Yep, 
yesterday we 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 went a little bit more into the world of procedural mod modeling using geometry nodes it was actually quite uh, interesting but um, there are still a lot of questions at least we learned a little bit more about um, how to use i guess how the workflow works and how to create you know new new um new valuable not valuables new variables and new i can't think of the word but you know just adding more yeah more variables to an object so you can kind of define those you know change them and kind of apply them to the geometry you want to create which is really fun really cool um one thing that i kind of wanted to figure out but couldn't really was um how to apply I don't really know if that works, but I think I read it somewhere or I saw a tutorial about it. Um, how to distrib distribute um, particles or points to f specific faces. That would be pretty cool if that works, but I don't know if it does. Maybe I've seen a Twitter video about it, that it's an upcoming you know, feature, but um, I don't know. I didn't see it and I couldn't really find any, I guess, results for it. So I'm not really sure if it actually works. Um, one thing that I want to look up right now is um, Blender, Blender, Parallax, Shader, Effect. How to make Parallax, how to make Parallax effect in Blender? Well, that's probably not using a shader, right? Probably not. Wait. Oh no. What is this? No. Show me how you do it. Show me. I guess. Oh no, that's just the camera trick. Is it? Geometry. No, it's not Blinagur. Oh, uh, yeah. No, he doesn't talk about how to just... So what I wanted to do is... So, for example, if you want to create a house... Um, like, a, like a procedural house, basically, can you, where you can kind of decide how many stories you want to have, how many windows you want to have on a wall, how they're going to be, you know, displayed, or how they're going to be um, placed on the wall. Um, there's a video where they show, oh, well, here's this procedural house and you have a window right there and then a window right there. The problem is with the usual distribution methods for points, it's just random. So they place them randomly somewhere, which means the windows would just intersect, which is what happened with the flower. The flower basically had petals that just went into each other, um, which I wanted to fix. I think one, one solution for that was the other option for the distribution where it's not random, but it's where you can decide how close particles can be next to each other, which of course makes sure that they're not intersecting. But um, you can also not create a pattern. It is just randomly still distributed. Um, quick sketch day. Oh, D day, <laughs> day. 150, there you go. Yeah, so the plan, of course, today is to create a digital clock shader. And then afterwards, we're going to go into, oh, it, oh, of course, if we have some more time, um, we're going to try and create a parallax shader. That is something I really wanted to figure out because that could really enhance the look of the you know digital clock shader. Um, and if you can figure it out, it would be really, really cool. So, um, yeah, if we have some more time, I definitely want to look into that because it, it it can probably open up quite a few possibilities when it comes to how you can set up your objects, especially when it comes to hard surface stuff and all that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. So post-production time, let's go into the contrast first. Zip. Oh, that's too strong. There you go. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Do you mean for math and displacement nodes or mapping to create the parallax shader, I guess, and then attribute map range for the um for the windows you mean that they're not you know that they're um that they have a pattern do you mean that hold on uh we need black probably do we need black no black can probably be the same but i want to probably bring gray down a little bit or high higher yeah higher seems to be pretty good we don't, we don't want to lose too much too much detail here but i think that's pretty good so now we can bring in the uh, the good old shader, and then we can finish this up. There you go. And set it to 50%, add, and there you go, perfect. Yeah. There's probably some sort of tutorial on how to create a procedural, you know, house. I'm probably going to look into that at some point. <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> okay. PSD, perfect. Yep. Easy post-production, nothing crazy. I actually thought about maybe adding some depth of field to this image, but I decided not to because then if I, you know, make a video out of it, it wouldn't have the parallax effect, which is kind of weird. So, nope, I'm not going to do that. Parallax effect, I mean depth of field. There you go. Perfect. Okay, where's my phone? There it is. That's the problem when you, you know, you have this new system, like geometry nodes. You have people that have like a whole lot of experience working procedurally because of the Blender node system. And then you want to, you know, figure it out yourself. You want to look for, for references or anything that can help you figure it out. But there's nothing because everybody just shows off their finished work or nothing. <laughs> what they, how they got there. Or they show like the you know, zoomed out image of just all the nodes, which are like 500 and you can't really figure out any of them because they're so, so small. And then if you Google anything, you just get nothing except for maybe some sort of, you know, glitch reports. Okay. Uh, okay. Import the image and then we can proceed. There you go. Oh, you know, you you um, you talked about creating a necromancer. Today, uh, an hour ago, I've published a new video on my video channel talking about how to create a realistic character in four minutes, where I go over the whole the whole workflow, um, basically showing off how I created the orc character, but with a little bit more. You know, I try to not only kind of talk about the whole process <clears throat> in four minutes, but also try to put in as much information on how to make it easier on yourself, like what what sort of reference to look for or um, how to start, how to, yeah, just a few tips in there as well. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it actually, but I wanted to stay in the, in the, in the scoped um, tab. By the way, did you know that there's a new function in 2.93 where you can switch between objects in the scope tab, which is pretty cool if you have multiple objects in the scene. If you hover over the object you want to switch, you can just press D and then you you switch to the other project, I mean the other object, which is really, really cool. Really, really helpful. That is actually something that I wanted to see at some point because it's, it's always annoying to having to go back to the editing um, tab or at least out of scope mode and then selecting the other object and then going back into it you know three clicks now we just have to press d okay so time for the compilation hold on uh 
Oh, I need a new object. I mean, new project. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to see you in three minutes. And then um, we're going to start with this digital clock shader. So, I'll see you in three minutes. Have fun. There you go. It is done. Let's get to the next point. There you go. Okay. Hold on. Uh, there you go. Okay. Perfect. So, so the plan is to use a plane and a material to create a digital clock shader. So, of course, what do we need? What do we need? We need a plane. Hold on. Why is this so, so quiet? Oh, that's better. Okay. So, let's begin. First thing first, what do we need? We need a plane. So, let's add a plane. There you go. Next up, um, should we use some reference? Um, just to kind of see how wide it needs to be. Mm. Well, yeah, let's just pull up like one reference. I already have one that I want to pull up. Hold on. Uh, if I can find it. Are we in here? Yeah, yeah. The one that I use for the thumbnail. Which is right here. There you go. Uh, oh, I can't put it in there. Right here. There you go. Okay. So, the problem is... I'm probably not going to use... Hmm. I don't think I can use the, um, I'm not going to make them like slanted. I think you, you, you call it like, uh, you, these diagonal lines. I want to make them just straight lines because otherwise there will be a whole, you know, way, way harder. <laughs> so, um, I just want to have straight lines instead of like these diagonal lines. I don't really know if you can really create those, to be honest. How would you do this? Hmm. So I guess you would have to create a um, like a like a honeycomb 
pattern but then you would have to have to make it somehow like wide but also somehow slim at the same time <laughs> which is kind of hmm, yeah i don't think that'll work we're probably just going to create a um we're, we're just going to create you know straight um straight straight lines without any slanting or whatever okay so um we have of course so i'm gonna i'm only gonna make probably four four um four letters and then with the two dots in the middle which means we have probably how how wide should they be they could probably be like two blocks wide if you look at the grid right here like two is that too too slim that could be too slim we could also maybe use maybe we could use like one block by one block but then they're so far apart so many problems <laughs> hmm I mean, we don't really have to care about that necessarily. What we can, what we should care about though, is, yeah, let, let's start first, let's start. Um, so what I wanna do first, I wanna kind of, kind of say how long this will be. Probably, it only probably needs like to be this long, maybe a little bit longer like this, so that we have enough room for all the letters, for all the numbers, there you go. We're just gonna apply the scale, so there's no stretching. Okay, uh, this should still be, Unwrapped, right? There's no, yeah, okay. Okay, so let me just quickly grab my, uh, do I even need to use the camera? I don't really think so, okay. So let's begin. <clears throat> first things first, I wanna separate this into multiple parts so that I can, so the, the idea is basically to create small little windows where the numbers will be so basically four windows and then you know the dots in the middle and then four win or two windows the dots in the middle and then two windows which then display the number in it basically masks to display different numbers in it um so basically it'll be similar to a padlock with numbers where you can rotate the number but instead of rotating them the number we just move a texture up and down that's the idea that i have currently so what i want to do first is i want to create the mask that i can then use to create the um, the yeah to to separate these numbers, <clears throat> which means, do we even need to? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. So, let's begin. First of all, we need a shader. Wait, we can't put it in there. Okay, hold on. Let me open it in here. There you go. That's better. Okay. That's the shader setting. And let's go to the material preview. Otherwise, we're not gonna see what we're gonna work on. Let's make a new shader. There you go. First thing first, um, we need the principal BSDF, of course. But then we need, probably I'm gonna start with a gradient shader, a uh, gradient texture, just because the gradient shader is perfect to create these mask pieces. Because now what we can do is we can use a um, Cutaram node, set it to constant and then we can create separations which means we can now create how many do we need we have four digits and then also so basically five um five you know spaces but then the middle space the two dots should be smaller which would mean that we have um probably like half the space that they that the others need so if we hold on <laughs> if the whole thing is what is it like uh, 100 divided by 5 is 20 so if if the if the middle piece will be 15 wide how much would there be on all you both sides um 100 negative or minus 15 is uh, 85 85 divided by 4. Mm. <laughs> That's an odd number. Hold on. Um, 85 divided by 4. 
21.25, okay. So, 21.25, which means, okay. So the first one, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna color those so we can make a color code. It'll be easier, we need five of those. There you go. So we have probably red, we have pink, we have blue. Okay, so the first one should be at 0.2525, right? 21.25, uh, 0.25, right? No, yeah, 21, okay. 21, 2125, there you go. The next one should be at uh, 0.2125 times two. There you go. The next one should be at uh, the right side piece here. Should be at, um, do we need this even? I think so. Do we? No, okay. This piece should be at 100, okay, hold on. One hundred minus twenty one point two five is seventy eight point seven five, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I already forgot the number. <laughs> I'm so bad at math. Hold on. Um, there you go. Seventy eight point seventy five. Okay. So. 0.7875 then 0.7875 minus point <laughs> um, 2125 there you go and there you go we have both we have all the pieces oh we need one more do we yeah we do yeah yeah right here oh right here how does that work? Oh, like this. No, wait. There's one missing. What do I... Oh, hold on. I know why. There you go. Okay. So this one is at zero. This one will be at uh, 21.2125. Yeah, perfect. And now we have uh, four digits and the middle piece. Let's make uh, gray values out of those. So... Hold on, there you go. This one will be the first one, which will be a value of 0.2125. Then we oh, remove the color. We then have a value of, hold on. Okay, then we have a value of, what is it? Hold on. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, this one is zero. This one's zero. This one's um, 0.2125. There you go. Then we have... Oh, wait, it's actually, you know, the value that we need to put in. What is it? Hello. Copy. And paste. Oh, sub saturation gone. There you go. Copy and paste up oh. and then copy and paste and there you go now we have a nice grid that we can use for the masks <coughs> first things first let's see um yeah let's create the letters so the idea is basically to create a line of numbers that we can then basically put into this plane or that we can then shift into the into the uh, small grid right there <clears throat> which means what we need first is i guess the numbers so let's see we basically need to make a band out of numbers that we can rotate. I thought about making it vertical, but I think it's easier if we make it horizontal. Because then we don't use that much space, because the letters are, you know, higher than they're wide. So we can fit more into the same space. So, yeah. We probably need a longer um, piece for that, though. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and use... Do we need to add more? I mean, do we need to... Yeah, we do. So I'm going to add another one right here. I'm going to make it wider. I'm going to apply it. Uh, scale. Yeah. We make a new material. Uh, this material will basically just serve as the creation ground <laughs> for the letters, which I then copy into the material in here. So just to kind of visualize it better, I'm going to make it in here. There you go. I'm going to use a gradient texture. There you go. I'm going to use a mapping node. Probably UV. No, UV doesn't work because it because then it would be squashed together. So we probably need to add, use U object. Yeah. Then we need to push this all the way over here. There you go. How big is this actually? Oh, doesn't really tell you, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and then we need to change the gradient's length. I guess the easiest way would be to use the scale. No, hold on. Aha. The gradient is definitely too small. I mean, too too long, too stretched out. I don't really know where the end is though. That's the biggest problem right here. We can probably see the end if we use some cutter though. Cutter ramp, there you go. Set it to oh, uh, red and blue. Okay. Oh, what we can also do is we can just use a uh, constant node, I mean constant uh, setting here, and then set this to blue so we can see where the end of um, the gradient is, basically. Where it caps out. So now we can actually fully stretch it out to the max. What we can also do is we can go in here and do the same at the back, which then lets us see where the beginning is. Hopefully, if I, if I remember correctly, like this. Which means now if we pull it over here some more, we can see the end. Perfect. So we the end has to be there and the beginning has to be there. So we get the full range into this uh, plane. This is probably kind of fiddly, but maybe there's some some math we could do, but I don't want to do that now. <laughs> there you go. Maybe 079. No, a little bit more. Maybe 6. No, wait, it makes it bigger, right? No, 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 no. Point eight one. There you go. Oh, that's almost there. We need a little bit more. Point eight. Point oh five. A little bit more. What about two? That's pretty good. Ah, uh, hold on. Two, one. Nope, other direction. So we need to set it to 1.9. Well, not 1.9 then. Let's say 0.5. Nope, even more. What about uh, 2.5? <coughs> oh, there it is. Perfect. Okay, now we have the full range on this plane. Let's get rid of this. Make a new one. So now what I want to do, the first one will be to create the letter... Um... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and go in to constant mode again. So what we can do now here is basically create all these small strips individually. <coughs> Which means what I want to do first is I want to create a grid. Wait, 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 wait. We could use a different texture, can we? Hold on. What if we use... I'm going to keep this there here. I'm going to make a new one, actually. Hold on. There you go. Use a brick texture. I want to see something, if that actually works. Uh, 
Okay, now we of course have to change the the size. There we go, mortar size. Oh, that's interesting. Why is oh where's the uh there it is. Offset. There you go. Okay, we don't need any offsets. That's perfect. Squash. Oh, okay. Frequency. Well, the squash isn't there, so we don't need we don't need any frequencies. Okay. Let's go to the mortar size. First things first, they need to be pretty slim. Do we even need one? I don't think so. Do we? Yeah, we do. We do, we do, we do, we do. We, make it, we have to make it pretty big. Mortar smoothing. We don't need more mortar smoothing. Bias. Ah, we don't need bias. <clears throat> Brick width. There you go. That's what I wanted. So, how many lines do we need? <clears throat> we could maybe make it more digitally, but I think if you make those, you know, these... These digits are pretty solid, not like this digital, you know, pixel effect actually. So we make them just solid, I guess. So now how many letters do we need? We need um, one to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have to change the the width within this does. Why is this middle piece so wide? Ah, no. Okay. Yeah, I would rather split it up rather than having uh, these huge mortar pieces there. Well, so how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Now we just have to move it a little bit. Right here, I guess. Yeah, we make a new mapping node just so we can split these two pieces. There you go. Okay. Now they're all in place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're perfectly um, spaced out. The problem is, I think they're too big. Are they? Are they is the question. One thing that I want to change though is the 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 the, the amount of um, I guess bricks from top to bottom. They need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right now they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they need one more row height. So how many do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gonna make this a little bit slimmer so we can remove it at the top and bottom. Okay, so now we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is actually too much, okay. <laughs> Or like that one two three four five six it's still too much dude i can't count one two three four five six seven one two three four five six am i just done <laughs> all done <laughs> oh i need to move this down actually so we can have oh that's wrong valuable there you go so there's a brick in the middle rather than uh, a line in the middle there you go so one two three four five six seven Perfect. Okay, so now we have the horizontal lines in place. Let's do the vertical lines. The vertical lines. No, let's let's do the the horizontal lines first. The problem oh, actually is that okay. Let's create the um. Wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> So the idea would now be to remove the middle pieces first. Let's do that now, just to kind of have a starting point. I'm going to use a, another gradient texture and then mix these two. So I'm going to use a gradient texture. Where is it? Oh, I can probably use this one actually. Can I? No, I can't. I need another one that goes from top to bottom. Let's do that. Um, so we need another texture, gradient texture. There you go. Go in here, mapping. 
uh, can we put it? No, we probably need another mapping node. This still has to be an object though. There you go. Nope, I'm gonna make a new one. T, set it to object. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> next up, wait, 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 I have an idea, but I don't think that'll work. No, that'll not work. Okay. So, um, we set it to linear, linear should work. We have to pull it all the way. No, we have to rotate it. Let's rotate it like this, 90 degrees, and we have to pull it up as well. There you go. Perfect. All the way up. Okay. Now if we use a gradient converter color ramp, set it to constant. Okay, the gradient is definitely too long, so we have to probably scale it in half. So we have to do the same again that we've done before, kind of fitting it onto the plane. Shouldn't take too long though. There you go. Okay. Now change the scale. That's the wrong scale. We need this scale. Oh. We need probably, I think we need 0.5, right? Like this. And we have to pull it down. And there you go, perfect. Fits perfectly in there. Okay. So now we can remove this again. We can make a new color ramp. There you go, cut it into factor, and then we have the setup ready. So now we can combine these two, cut our mix RGB. Hold on, I'm going to set this to constant first. So we have a fully black. Wait, do we need black or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, we need a cutter mix RGB node. We then set it to... Um... Let's, let's remove the middle pieces first that have to be removed anyway. Um, so we're going to put the color in there. We're going to put the other color in here. We're going to go in here. We're going to set it to multiply. Let's see what it looks like. Nothing happens. Oh, it needs to be at one. There you go. So now we can first of all remove the ones that are that need to be removed anyway, which will be the one at the top here. This one. One. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, perfect. So we can remove the one back here as well. There you go. Then we need two more or three more. This one needs to be black. So that we can remove this one as well as this one. And then we need one right here and one right here, perfect. So that's the beginning. Now the gap is basically gone. <clears throat> the next part would be to remove the um wait no yeah to to kind of shape the 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 numbers. So what do we have here? We have one where basically nothing is needed. <clears throat> and then we have two. Okay. Now we have to think about how we can uh, remove individual points. I wonder if that's easier if we use... No, it's not really easier. No, it's not. Okay. Well... Okay, so let's let's talk. Let's go over all the ones that we still need, like that that needs to be that need to be removed completely. That would be. Let's see. Okay. 
So, okay, let's let's create that now. Um, which means we need to combine it into this one as well. So we're gonna need another color mix RGB. Right here, if you set it to black, it'll just remove all of it. If you set it to white, we're gonna add more. Which means now we can remove the pieces that need to be removed anyway. Which means we need the this vine. Perfectly good that we've saved it because now we need it. Put it in there. We can now plug it in there. Which means we have nothing. And then we should add more. We can add these. Bring we can bring these back. Uh, one thing we have to change though. Hold on. I think we have to convert it in the other direction, right? No. Oh, n not mix. Hold on. Hmm. Let, let me see. Hold on. I need to I need, need to think about it a little bit. How we can set this up. Wait, couldn't we use... What have... Hold on, I want to I want to try something. What if we use the... What is the brick shader here? Okay, let's, let's go in here and change something. First of all, I'm going to move it down here. There you go. And then I want to go in here and look at it. Next up, I will go in here and change the mapping. So what I want to do now is I want to grab this probably. Nope, I want to use this. There you go. Pull it down here. So what I want to do is I want to create a new color ramp. There you go. Set it to constant. And then plug it into the scale. So now there should be nothing, right? Or everything and then we can bring it back this now is a scale of one right which means we only need to scale it on the z-axis is it the z-axis is it the one that's the right one or the wrong one it's yeah it's y so what we need to do is we go in here and we Use vector. Oh no, no, we need um, where is it? Converter, combine and combine X Y Z and separate X Y Z. Okay, we then say what is it? Copy it. Copy. Copy. And copy. Then we separate it, then we combine it again, which means if we plug this in now, it should be the exact same. There you go, perfect. Okay, now we can adjust the uh, Y value. <clears throat> which means we can use this texture now to uh, adjust the Y value. Um, so we probably need a math note, converter math note, put that into the Y factor. So now if we set it to multiply, no, to add, right? <laughs> I think so. Then we, uh, if we change it, you can see it gets bigger or smaller. Perfect. Which means now if we go in here. And we use this as the factor. We can change the size. Okay. What we have to change though is how big they need to be, how big they get. 
and also one is the standard value and then it needs to be bigger which means we have to multiply this we need another converted math node oh, math node which will be multiply so that if we use this this needs to be bigger than one which means we first set it to we set multiply and then we also say converter math plus one because I want to change the white value. I mean, I want to want to make it bigger first and then I want to make the black value set it to one. So we're going to say add one so that the black value is always one in the end. Which now means if we increase the value, we increase the, the scale. Okay. This will probably be quite fiddly, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next up, um, it's not, it doesn't have the exact same value that it had before. And that is, why is it, why is it that way? Um, Why, hold on, I need to track this back. So this is uh, one. Oh, it's, it's set it to add. Should we t set it to multiply? I think multiply is better. Yeah, 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 multiply is the exact one that we need. Okay. So let's set this up. First of all, we need to set it maybe to this so we can really see the change. Should we set it to put it into mapping as well? I don't think that'll help. No, that, that'll not help. Or maybe it'll help. But I, I think that this this method will be too fiddly, because then we can have to fiddle with these settings and kind of make it bigger and make it smaller. I think this is too complicated than what we need to do here. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> So the biggest problem that we have right now is that we, wait, no, we don't need, first of all, we don't need mix because then we basically just, yeah, yeah, first of all, we need to set it to, so if we set it to add, we basically just bring back the bars that were already there, which is not what we want to do because we want to remove certain pieces. And we want to still keep the ones removed that are already removed. Um, I don't really know why it's not fully... Oh, because it's set to add. We have to probably set it to multiply. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means now we can still remove pieces. So which ones need to be removed? One has no lines. One has no lines. Then the next one that has no horizontal lines is... So we have one, then two has three. Which means these three stay. The next one that has no is not three, not four. Four has one. Five has three. So four, five... Then we have um, six has, depending on how you build it, probably three as well. Six, seven has one, eight has one, no, three, and nine has two. Okay, so the only one needs to go away. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's the next step. So we remove the horizontal lines where they need to be removed. The next step would be to remove um, 
where it needs to be removed. <laughs> so basically, um, now we try to let's go over the the lower bar first. Let's see if we create can create a a gradient that can remove the lower bar only, which shouldn't be a big problem, because now what we can do is we can just probably grab the where's the horizontal? I mean the um, vertical. The vertical is this one, right? No, the vertical. That's another horizontal. Is it? Can't remember. No, this one's vertical. Perfect. So we need this. Put it over here. Okay. So the next step would be to remove pieces that need to be removed. We can probably start by separating the lower bar. <clears throat> so we're going to go in here and we're going to remove this. I want to look at this. Oh, we're going to go converter cut ramp and again, and we're going to set it to constant. We're going to separate only the lower bar right there. Everything else will be white, right? Yeah. No. So first of all, we separated it. That's the first step. Next, we need to create a horizontal gradient that can remove the ones in the, at the bottom. So we need this one again. And then we can combine these two. Um, so this will be the mask that we can then use to remove the horizontal lines, which means we need a converter math note. The yoke, no, not math. We need uh, mix RGB is probably the same because they both work with, with the values. There's no really color, but I just use a mix note because I want to. <laughs> okay. So the first one should be for the horizontal mask and the one going up should be for the, um, for the, what is it? Basically, what I want to do is I want to create it so that where these two masks, the horizontal mask and the, or the horizontal gradient and the uh, vertical gradient meet, there should be white. So if you look at this one, this one is stopped right here. The other one stops right there, which means if we use mix, what happens right there is this. What we want to have though is probably multiply, right? There you go. So now if we, if we move this, we can remove it right there. If we move this, we can remove, we can add more to this, which we don't want to do right here. So this will be the mask, which we can then apply to the basic uh, horizontal lines, which means this one are the basic horizontal lines, which I'm going to put a frame around so we can, you know, <laughs> kind of see through the whole mess here. There you go. Let's call it... Um, horizontal lines let's change the color maybe we can set it to green properties label size bigger maybe 50 or maybe 100 oh let's wait why is it called frame there you go um one thing that i want to change is the uh i i hate that that you can't see the um what a shrink. Does that mean that? Oh, that's cool. There you go. Haha. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So next thing is we need to separate or create. This will be the mask. So we basically now have the uh, the lines, and now we have the mask as well. So we can now use this. Uh, we can create another frame, layout frame, right here. We're gonna put that in there call it um, mask hoary <laughs> and then um, three the lowest one is number three I'll just call it three color yep we're gonna set it to I guess red okay
label size 100. Okay, so now we can mix these two again. Got our mix RGB. There you go, put these up, oh, put these two together. And yeah, combine these two like this. And then we need to fix a few things here first. First of all, we need to set it from mix probably to multiply again. Wait, 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 wait. What is this out outcome? The small bar right there. This outcome is... Why is it straight again? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at this. Okay, so now we want to basically separate this into multiple pieces so that we can remove. So what I want to do, I'm going to show you what I want to do. If we now go in here, I think that's the horizontal one, right? And add another bar right here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's set to mix. I think it's need to set to multiply. There you go. We can bring back or remove the bottom bottom line let's do that now which means we need to actually show this one which will be not multiplied by this but multiplied by this <laughs> why is it not going well is it uh too complex or are you working on the scope right now to uh, let me hmm. so we have one two three has one down there three four has none five has one Five has one. Six has one. Seven has none. Six, seven. Eight has one. And nine has one as well. So one, two, three. Wait, no, hold on. One, two, three has one as well. Hold on. I did a mistake. Three, four has none, which means this has to go over here. One, two, th hold on. Is there, are there two more? No, there, okay. One, two, three, four, five. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Hold on. One, two, three, four. Ah. Four, five, six. Oh, five, six have both. Okay. Like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine, perfect. So those are the, the lines for the bottom piece. Perfect. Okay, now we have to do this uh, again. So we have to duplicate this um, to do the same. Wait, can we? <clears throat> oh yeah, I guess we can, because we can just duplicate the whole thing. <laughs> I guess that we, that's what we can do. Um, yeah so let's do that well let's frame this again can we frame the whole thing let's see if that works oh hold on um shrink i think we need to enable it otherwise we're just gonna destroy the whole setup aha this will be called color first now let's let's not use the color this will be called 
Um, three Hori. There you go. Or Hori three. Hori three. Okay. Let's do the same for. The um the next row, the one in the middle. So what we have to look at here is this piece first. This piece needs to go higher. Right there. Wait, 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 wait. We can actually look at this. Wait, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Now we can go in here and we can add another oh black piece over here. So we can only select the, the middle pieces. Then we can reset this. There you go. And we can do the same in the middle. The problem is... Oh, yeah, yeah. We should probably start with white and then go to black. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, why is this one removed all the time? We don't need it for the second row, but we need it for the third one. So why is it just removed? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh wait, we need a zero as well. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Who needs zero? Who needs zero? Can we... Oh, we could probably fix it pretty quickly. Can we? Let's see. So, let's look at this first. So we actually don't need... What do we need? We need more than this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more. Are you struggling with the the sculpt or just in general something else? The uh, likeness. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. No, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Okay. Let's do the same again. Okay, let's <laughs> let's do this again. So we have um so how how much do we need here? Wait, is that the right one? It is. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's just the best choice to just retry the sculpt. Sometimes you know you kinda learn from how you know what you don't like with the current one, so you change it for the next one, which is sometimes even the better option. That's that, that's what happened for my uh, quick sculpt female ogre. Um, I did it once, and then I decided to, to retry, and then the the, sec the second one was way way better. <clears throat> so it's not never really you know, it it kind of hurts to re restart, but you know it, it just better. <laughs> So, the biggest question that I have is why is there no 1 ever displayed? We can go all the way to 1, but it is not there. Is it because of this? No, it's not because of this. There is a 1, but we can't see it, and that's the question that I have, why? Oh, because of this, right? Why is it like this? Oh. Yeah, oh, why, it's, why does it stop there? Wait, there's something wrong. What did I do here? Oh. We don't even need this. We don't even need this. There you go. Yep, that was the problem. Let's try again. So, number one, nope. Then we have number two, yep, oh, number two, 
Yep. Number three. One, two, three. Yeah. We have number four. No. Then we have number five. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yeah. Seven. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Let me just quickly um, add a text object to this so I can write it down so that I don't have to think about it the whole time. One, no, yeah, one. Two, three, four. Hold on, I'm gonna make it bigger first. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Texture space. Nope, I don't need that font. There you go. Um, shear. We don't need shearing. Size. Yeah, we can change the size first. Um, underline. Do we don't need? Do we have something like spacing? There you go. Perfect. There you go. Okay, now we actually at least know what the numbers are, so we don't have to, you know, <laughs> uh, remember them the whole time. Okay, let's create a new folder. I'm going to save it up real quick, which will be in um, digital clock shader. Okay, perfect. So let's get into this. Okay, the bottom row is done, basically. Let's go to the next one. Hori 3, yeah, let's do another one. So duplicate, there you go. And let's do the next row. Actually, I'm gonna give this a gray or a white. No, white doesn't really work that well. Let's, let's work with the uh, this that's pretty good copy it point oh, point five okay perfect we do the same in here otherwise we don't really see the, the the frames intersecting that was the problem that i had right there so now we can actually see them um they were they had the exact same color than the background which wasn't really working for me <laughs> so i just, just switched the color let's go in here and change the next one so the next one will be higher right there There you go, perfect. So this one will be <clears throat> one has none, two has yeah, three, yep, four has one, which is this one, right? Yeah. F one, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, yep, seven, no, eight, nine, zero has none as well. There you go, perfect. So that's the the next uh, line, the next row. Let's go to the next one. So we're going to call this one Hori 2. We need one more. go and we say Hori 1. We can look at this and we can say we move it higher. There you go. Okay. So this one will be let's see. Now let's just restart. Actually should we restart? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so we have one. We don't have... No, we don't have one. There you go. Two? Yes. Three? Yeah. Four? No. 
Then we have five, yeah. Six, yeah. Seven, yeah. Eight, yep. Nine, yep. Zero, yep. Perfect. Okay, now we have the, uh, we have all the, the horizontal lines, so we can combine them now. I can actually not zoom out more than this. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, combine them now. Um, what we could do is we could just use a cutter, mix RGB for the first two. Trying to f combine them here. There's probably some sort of shortcut to combine or to connect these layers or these, these nodes, but I don't know what it is. We can set it to add. No, yeah, add. There you go. Um, and then we do it once more. We should probably do these first. Yeah, let's do these first. There you go. Can I come, you know, make this a little bit smaller? This gets quite big. Trying to make it as small as possible so we don't have to use so much space. Bad thing is we have to do that for all three, but that shouldn't take too long, hopefully. There you go. Perfect, we can probably even make these, we can close these because we don't need them. There you go. Okay. Um, stabilize stroke is probably useful if you do very precise stuff. For example, for stylized characters, I think stabilize stroke can be very useful. I don't really use it myself because I usually just by going into more detail, it, it just gets cleaner. So I don't really do it that much. Or I don't really use it. That's another video <laughs> that came out this week. My brush, what, what, which brushes I use and the settings that I uh, set when I sculpt. So if you ever wonder, you can look at those. I don't think you need to be very fancy with the, the brushes. They're pretty fine by themselves, so you can just use the standard stuff. I, do, I only use like six brushes. Um, that's all I need. Um, and yeah. I don't really need more because that's basically all that cover that covers basically everything that you basically need for sculpting. You know, stuff like the thumb brush. I've never used in my entire life. I think these ones are more like gimmick brushes, I guess, that have a certain effect that they create, which is, you know, used in like two scenarios maybe, <laughs> which makes them kind of redundant, in my opinion. Maybe some people swear by them, but I don't. Okay, almost there. Trying to make it smaller. There you go. Perfect. We saved some room. Hell yeah. Okay. So let's combine the 
other one now. Put that in there. Plug it in there. And put that in there. And now we have all three rows. Look at this. Perfect. Now we have to do the same for, you guessed it, for the horizontal lines. I mean, vertical lines. <clears throat> and then we have the letters. Um... Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually, you know, the stream is more used for, you know, live stuff, basically creating the videos live and then condensing them into a more bite-sized version as a video. Um, so depending on what you want to see, you can um, either watch the live streams or the videos. Of course, you, you'll you probably have more um you, you can see more content on the live channel because I don't kind of really convert everything to videos, but um, I guess the most important stuff you could find on the videos channel. 2 a.m. <laughs> it's like a, someone from Australia or from, uh, from, I don't even know, probably from Australia, right? We're close to it. Um, okay. So let's create the horizontal lines. We have to basically create the same thing again, which means we need um, we need this again, the mask. Give me that. There you go. Can we? I still don't know how we can get it out of the frame. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a night owl. Okay. So let's see what looks, this looks like. Yeah, exactly. So now what we have to do is, um, first of all, change the shape. Which means this one needs to be... Oh, we probably need more mask for the... Because, yeah, we need more more vertical lines and horizontal lines. Uh, I don't even know where, where he's from. But I think most of the people that, you know, come by the stream sometimes um, are s somewhere in Europe. I know that you are from Canada. No, Canada was somebody else. America, US. Um, but I think most of them are from either from India actually or from from Euro Euro Europe somewhere. <clears throat> so. Yeah, let's create the mask for this first. We definitely need more groups for the vertical lines, which will be kind of a headache, but it shouldn't take too long if we set up the first one. So, yeah, let's remove this first. I'm going to reset this. Oh, there you go. Oh, hold on. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, the eye rigging setup is, I, yeah, you could probably use it for, um, yeah, I mean, it could probably, it's pretty useful, pretty simple as well, so um, that's why I use it the whole time, that's why I kind of like using constraints, because you can kind of, that's why I use constraints for my camera rig, I have like set up a camera rig that basically controls the focus point and the depth of field individually. So I can move the camera while still focusing on the object, if I can see it. Oh yeah, of course. So the camera always looks at the the empty that is has these vertical and horizontal lines, and then the diagonal lines are for the depth of field, which means I can you know focus on a certain point. If this is supposed to focus on the five, I can put it right here. And if I want to put the depth of field to the six, I can put it over here. And then this 
in my opinion, makes it way easier to control the camera than just, you know, moving it myself and then even rotating it, and, you know. Um, and I kind of, you know, use the same for the eyes as well, which I think um, works quite well, because, you know, they're supposed to focus on a certain point, maybe not exactly, but it kind of does the trick if you pull it further away, the focus point. Okay, so this one needs to be all the way up, like this. And then we have, wait, oh no, we wait, we need, do we, no, wait, 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 wait. there you go. So now we have one that controls whether or not we can see the top row or the bottom row. Which means now what we have to do is we have to we can now decide which row we want to do, which will be... Oh, we have to set up the, the bricks first. Do we? Yeah, we have to. Okay, let's do that now. Which means what we have to do first is we have to make another brick layer. We can probably just use this one and kind of adjust it. Okay, well, I, I hate that it's just pulling up the group even more. Okay. So now we're getting back to <laughs> thinking. <laughs> okay, so we need another add node. Oh, there you go. We have to combine these two pieces so I can see where I need to add the next one or how the horizontal lines are supposed to look like. It's set to add, right? Yeah, okay. So if I move this now, we can see we can just shift this. I oh, know we have to set it to multiply. There you go. Okay. Do we? No, 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 no. We have to set it to add. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll do some animations next week. I think that's going to be the plan. Probably, maybe we're going to spend the next week fully on the animation, or of course, depending on how long it's going to take, we're going to do something else the next, the last few days, maybe. I want to finish the animation so I can get back to color in my free sketches. <laughs> okay. This needs to be smaller first. Then we have the row height. The row height needs to be longer. It needs to be... Oh. We can still set it up. We can still set it up. It's. I think it's easier using a gradient though. I think so. Let's use a gradient actually, which need which means which one is the vertical gradient? This one, right? Copy this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I need both. The whole thing here. Which means I can use this. Hold on. <laughs> We're back to this. <laughs> okay. So what I want to do here is wanna first I wanna go in here and set this up. Which means I need to pull it over here and add it to this whole concoction right there. Which means I can now create the stripes that are vertical. They go maybe up to here. And up to there. There you go. Okay. Then we can do the same in here. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we need one more in the middle as well. No, two more. There you go. Okay, let's set up the, the stripes. Wait. Oh, we only need two masks. Oh, yeah. Kind of hard to f kind of configure it, but what we can also do is we can just make it longer. 
Did you grab some references for your sculpt? Of course, I don't really know what you're struggling with, but if it's with, uh, I don't know, the look or the uh, expression or whatever, that's why I always grab references, because, you know, references are always useful, no matter, no matter what you do. No, why why do not do I not see the link? That's weird. I, it's not blocked. I some you know so you can post links here, but why does not work? What is going on here? Can I see it in? Uh, wait, no, I can. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I know how I can do it. Uh, no, it. Hold on, I want to see if I can change the settings. Filtering. <laughs> I can mute a certain person. <laughs> I could mute you if I wanted to. But uh, no, I can't filter it out. I can't filter links, that is weird. I, I guess that that's just YouTube itself, because usually if you have links in, in a comment, they're, be, they're removed as well. What is this? Uh huh. So. Oh, hell yeah. So I guess just artstation.com slash. Hold on. Ha. Huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was cool. Hold on. Okay, interesting. So, what's your plan for... Well... Okay, yeah, the eyes shouldn't be too hard, but... Um... So, are you sculpting the dude first, or the the duck, or what's what's your plan for the beginning? You could maybe even hmm, you could maybe even use a duck sculpt as the base, and then you can create these patches by using a what is it called the um, shrink wrap modifier to put another layer on top which then it looks like they're actually disconnected which you can then connect with these smaller pieces <laughs> that sounds like the that sounds like the uh, the uh, <laughs> um my whole existence in blender <laughs> i tried hard surface modeling but then i <laughs> turned back to to sculpting <laughs> The hood? You mean this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, so he actually sits in the duck. Okay. Oh, no, he, yeah, yeah, he sits in it. Okay, okay, okay. Looks pretty cool. Looks pretty elaborate. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to see, you know, your version of it. Yeah, but I think you know there are so many, so many, I guess, organic shapes that I would definitely sculpt this. Maybe the staff you could probably, maybe the top top part of the staff you could you could model. You could maybe even you know create a base mesh by hard surface modeling and then going into sculpting to kind of refine it um but yeah i would i would hard surface i mean sculpt this as well yeah yeah that's that's i mean what you could do is you can retopologize it afterwards you know lying another geometry on top of it and then just using a solidify modifier 
That's something you can do to kind of make it thinner. <clears throat> okay, so we have to separate these a little bit more because can we set ah that might be enough. Let's see. This will be kind of like a, you know, a little bit fiddly, but well, that's just how it is, I guess. Eight six. You know what? Um, let's let's try it. It's pretty rough first, and then maybe if we want to, we can refine it. So we need a black dude here again. Oh, that's actually quite quite a big gap. That's pretty good. Okay, we need a black one. Wait, where's my reference? There you go. There you go. Okay. Are you going to use that for your game again or is that just, you know, for fun? Where have you have you finished your game? Yeah, that should be good enough. This shouldn't be, you know, this is not supposed to be the perfect perfect project. Just kind of supposed to, I guess, prove a concept. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you saw it in an art station, you had to recreate it. I know that feeling. <laughs> I know it too well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything, you know, is basically practice. But of course, if you do it deliberately, it's going to be more effective. <laughs> what what is the problem right now? Is it the sculpting part or something else? Okay, this is getting kind of thin. Why is it black? Oh. What? You mean uh, the dude? Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Well. Is it like if you're still in the beginning phase, couldn't you just, you know, kind of reshape it and reshape it until you get, get it right? Because you have a quite rough, um, quite a rough sculpt that you can still do big changes. Well, but he doesn't have a face, <laughs> so you don't really need a face. You only need ears, don't you? Or do you want to add a face to him?
Oh, that'll be a problem. I don't really know where the end is. Or where the last one is. Wait, I can't add more? Is that... Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't add more... Well, that's a problem. Oh, no, it's not really. The wizard face. Well, but... He has no face. <laughs> he just has glowing eyes. Or do you want to give him a face? Okay, so let's uh, fix this. Um, by just adding it to another one of this. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> so you're working on two dudes. <laughs> so many projects at once. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still at the game. I thought you, you meant you worked on... Uh, you didn't like the, the second sculpt. There you go. Easy. Problem solved. Maybe we, you could try, um, what I'd like to do, or actually, yeah, what I like to do is I just basically look for a person that I can, a, can, a, can find a picture of <clears throat> that I can use as main reference to sculpt the face of the wizard as, is that a sentence? I think so. <laughs> basically, um... You, yeah, you, you look for, for example, if I want to create a Spider-Man character, I would probably use, what's, what's the name from, of the, 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 the actor, whatever the, the name is, maybe even multiple ones, just so I can kind of sculpt it, of, sculpt, use that as a base, so I have a, you know, realistic base, um, that I can work off of, um, that's what I usually do, <clears throat> which, um, works quite well. Okay, so <laughs> one problem that I have is I don't know I don't know where the uh... where I need to put the line. Ah, there you go. There you go. Okay, let's bring it back. Okay, now we have the vertical lines as well. So what we do now is we need to... Wait. Oh yeah, four looks so weird. Why is four so short? <laughs> I, could re I guess we could make them longer. We could overlap them, but that looks weird, but we could try. Um, I've done, um, like sculpting before. We'll probably do it like in, in, at some point again. I've done probably five or so, maybe six, um, probably five on stream and then one more off stream. Um, they're on my videos channel as a time-lapse or you can of course watch them in their full length as well. I definitely realized that I can sculpt, um, uh, male characters better likeness sculpt male characters better than uh, female characters um so that's one thing that i want to improve on 
Uh, yeah. The last one that I've done was free, you know, girl, which uh, <laughs> didn't turn out that well. Um, yeah, I guess the best one was the one that I did previous before that, that basically um, th I did off stream, which turned out very, very good. I can probably show it to you. Hold on. It's in... Where is it even? I don't, I don't even know. Where? Why am I in Creative Cloud? It's in here. No, it's not in here. It's in here. There it is. So, here's the real person. Okay, that's the, that's the bad... Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to use this. So that's the real person. And then we have... Uh, so this one is probably the best one that I've done in terms of hitting the likeness. And then we have the... Uh, finished version the well i think this picture or this image is kind of um distorted because of the lens there's another one that i can probably pull up hold on this one i think this one is more accurate to the actual proportions yeah, of course it's not perfect but it's i think the closest one that i've gotten so far <laughs> yeah that's the closest one. You can actually see in the in the second compilation, the 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 pink one. There are all the likeness scopes that I've done, except for one that I've done more recently. Yep, that's probably the closest one that I've done so far. And that's actually no, that's not life. That's not life. The other ones are are life. <clears throat> At least no four, I think no. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This looks weird, does it not? This doesn't fit, no. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna keep it like this. The four might look weird, but that's something I, I will accept. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, male characters just seem to be easier because you can see the, um, you know, the, the features better, usually. And female faces are more subtle and more soft, which makes it harder to see the, um, the, um, all the, you know, bone structure and muscle structure underneath. Dude, time's flying by today. It's already been two and a half hours working on this. <laughs> it feels like I've been working on this for like an hour. Okay, we have to be a little bit faster here. Um, okay, so let's see. <clears throat> um, what do we need? What do we need? Oh, yeah, we need a mask for this now. Which means we need two masks, right? Do we? Yeah, I think so. Which means we need to duplicate this. There you go. Okay. Then we use this and create a mask. There you go. Which we'll call mask vert one let's see what it looks like hold on blue um okay let's see yeah so we need to remove all these 
So now that I now I know that there's a handle maximum for the cutter node. <laughs> That's something I had to learn at some point, I guess. There you go. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I need one for the top half and then one for the bottom half, which means I can probably remove this one first. There you go. Make it a little bit bigger, probably. And then we can combine these two. There you go, multiply. Okay. And then we change this. So zero needs one right there, both sides. Then we have white, another black one. Nine has one right there, it has one right there. Eight has both. We have seven has one right there, but none on the other side. Then we have six has one right there, but none, not on the other side. Perfect. Five. Nope. Five right there. Wait. Oh. Five, four, yeah, yeah, three, yep. None right there. Then two, like this. Wait, two right there. And then one has one as well. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So that's the top half. Let's do the bottom half. We can basically just duplicate all the, the whole thing here. Uh, I'm going to group this first. Frame it, rather. There you go. Where's my frame? There you go. Color 0.5. Label size 100. Call it, ah, who cares? And then we can duplicate it. Okay. Um, so now we have to go in here. Where's the combination? There it is. Okay, so this one needs to be low, right there, perfect. Wait, yeah. There you go, okay. Let's do the same down here as well. <clears throat> Wait, why is there, oh, I know why. There you go, okay. Let's begin. Let's could do the bottom row so we can finish the numbers. Then we can add the numbers to the uh, the um, selection um, to to the to the thingy here. Okay, let's do this. We have one right here. Where would you have it? So zero needs one right there. Perfect. Wait, we can actually right now add it to the whole thing, right? Yeah, we can. We have to add these two. So we need an add node right there. There you go, okay. So, zero, yep. Nine, nope, oh. Right, oh, come on. There you go. Then we have, wait, where are you? There you are. Perfect. Then we have eight. Yep. 
Ja. Nein. I mean, seven. Let's see, where's seven? There's seven. Seven. Then we have another one right here. Then we have six. Six, then five, exactly. Perfect. Another one. Four. Three. There you go. Two. Okay, okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. Ah, there you go. Easy. Those are all the all the numbers. Of course, one and four look kind of weird, look kind of small, but that's the small price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now that we have that, we have um, the numbers. So now we can add those numbers to the grid, hopefully. Okay, so <clears throat> the thing that we have to figure out now is how we can move the numbers. Because basically we have to define a vector. Wait. Um, I have an idea. It probably requires mapping though. Are they all using... Oh. Hell yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, this will... Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> this will take a while. To set it up first of course so yeah okay this is not working hold on i'm gonna go from the bottom i need to basically add a vector to all the x factors of all these mapping nodes that adds more to it which moves all of them no yeah x right yeah x moves all of them um in a certain direction or horizontally, to be exact. Just put this right, like, hold on. I can probably make this horizontal rather than vertical, that's probably easier. Okay. There you go. Pull. Nope, we don't have to. We can't pull it right now. We have to make it longer so we can extend these mapping nodes as well. Oh my god. <laughs> so many nodes. Wait, we can't just use the exact same for all of them. No, they're not the exact same. Are they? Is it exactly. Hold on. That could be. One five one two, five one five one two. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, that doesn't work then. Maybe, sort of. 5 1 2, 5 1, no. Yeah, let's just do it individually. We're almost there. Just a little bit more. Okay. Dude, I've never had such a huge note tree. <laughs> With such a stupid setup. <laughs> this is such a dumb setup, but it works, so you know, that's all that uh, that is important. As long as it works, I'm happy. Okay, there you go. So, <laughs> perfect. Okay. I don't know if that was better, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. Okay. So, now that we have that, we can use Um, so what, what X coordinates do we have? We have one, one, five, two, and we have one, five, one. Oh, we have one more right here. Five, one, or five, one, no, five, two, five, one, two, five, one, five, one, two, five, one, five, one, two. Okay. 482, where are you coming from? Five one, but that shouldn't be the biggest problem. So, so far we have 582. Five. Wait. Okay, so. <clears throat> which means. Let's set those up. So we have. Uh, okay, so first of all, what we need is. Texture. No. Um, converter. Separate XYZ. Perfect. Which will be. This one will be. Zero, zero. 0.51 then we need another one for 0.512 and then there's another one that we need for five one two five one two five one here 482 482 482 and 482 okay so we have three 482 482 okay 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 okay, okay. the 482 there you go okay now we have to plug these into all the ones that we need. <laughs> okay, so which means we have uh, 512 right here. 510, I mean. Um, here. Oh, we have to combine them again, okay. Combine X, Y, Z, thrice, <laughs> there you go, three times. Okay, so now we can go in here and 
use these by plugging 510 in here in all the ones that have 510. Nothing changed, perfect. Wait, why is nine looking? Why is nine and eight? Wait, where? Oh no, where, where's the one that I need? Nope. This one here? I think so. Okay, hold on, I need to <laughs> I need to figure out how this works. So if I move this, what is this one? Ah, this one, okay. So there's a mistake here. We need to add a black one, which will bring all the way up to the other side. So we can remove the nine down there, which means we have the wrong one. We need to go to the one right here. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Fixed. Okay. Let's go in here again and connect all these. Next one is 512, 512. Then we have 512. Okay, that's this one. Let's move these ones a little bit further down. I think we only need them for, for the brick layer, which is only back here. Okay. Then we have over here. Oh no, I don't want to include them. Okay. We have 5 1 right there. <laughs> then 5 1 2. There seems to be a pattern. Okay. Oh no. 5 1, 5 1 2. 512, okay. So, 51, 512, and 512. This will be, this will be a big mess, but that's okay. <laughs> 51, 512. And then we have the big boy. We have all three. Which means we have 482 here. 481. Oh. There you go. 482, 482. Wait. Oh. No. What what happened? Oh, one, oh, 11. Is that the same for all of them? Yeah, okay. What I did today, do you mean on stream or <laughs> off stream? I'm trying to figure out how to create a uh, digital clock shader. Yeah, basically, <laughs> look at this. It is a pretty stupid setup, but it works. You know, I've created this, uh, these, these letters or the, the numbers. So now I want to put them into these, uh, in these boxes. That would be the next step. Um, okay, yeah, now it should work. Nope. There you go. Aha. 
five one. There you go. What is this? Five one and five one two. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh no. Hold on, I need to move the whole thing around so I can actually put them there. There you go, okay. So what do we have here? Five one two. Five one. Come on, put that in there. Why don't you work? Why would you not work? There you go. Okay. Five one two. There you go. Okay, <laughs> we need one more. Over here. Okay, so this one is 482. And then 51. Then we have 51. 512. Okay, and then we have one more. One more. One more group, and then we're done with connecting the entire network. What is this? 0.42. And then we have 0.51. Okay. <laughs> and there you go. So now we've we've basically combined all these mapping nodes into these three setups here, which means we can now combine these ones as well. Um, by going in here into all three of them. And using an, um, what is it? Converter math node. Set it to add zero first. Put that into the X factor. There you go. Okay. And then we can use a single value, input value, to move the whole thing, hopefully. Okay. Wait. Oh no. <laughs> Something went wrong. That would have been too easy. Wait, why does it not work? I just... Oh, because it probably doesn't add, add it exactly the same. Why is it going up? Do I have to use Y? That doesn't make sense. Does it? Well, <laughs> uh, 
So, some, <laughs> something's wrong. I guess by we can't just move all the all the textures. Um, on the x-axis because that just um, or the problem is that they're not moving them the, the same amount which doesn't which it doesn't make sense though but it does also doesn't make sense why it why it moves it diagonally that is something I don't get Wait, what? What happened? Oh. So, yeah, if I add now just a value, it just moves up. But why? It doesn't make sense. We got so far. Now it's all over. Oh, what's going on here? Hold on. So... <laughs> this looks so stupid. Okay, so... <laughs> What happens if I move this just individually? Well, I don't want to remove it, to be honest. Hold on. Yeah, this just moves horizontally, but why does it not do that? This just doesn't move at all, okay. Why why do you not move? What is wrong with you? Oh, because you can move, okay. <laughs> well you can, theoretically. No you can, okay. So this means Well, it doesn't really change anything. So these ones are not important. The horizontal lines aren't important. They can actually be can stay in here. Which one is this? Five one. Five one. And then we have uh, a two. So these ones aren't important. We need the. Why do these um, vertical lines don't move? Is it this one? Seems like it is. Yeah. Why do you not move? What is wrong with you? Do I need to move this? Oh, I know why. Do I only need to move these? Well, that doesn't look good. Hold on. So this one just moves by like this. But why does it move so much? I guess the scale is different. That's the problem. The scale is different, which means they all move in the wrong direction or they all move. <sighs> which means we would have to figure out the scale difference between them. Um, so we have to kind of figure out the, uh, <laughs> we have to scale the movement horizontally um oh no did you save before it crashed 
we would have to figure out the um, the proportions between the mapping nodes so that you can add basically as much to the vector that they all move exactly the same which is probably possible oh you should you should never rely on autosave <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, you know, at least we, we've, <laughs> we figured out how to create this, which means we could use this to create a, um, a texture. We could bake the texture and then use it. What did I change again? I can't remember. What did I move? Oh no. There you go. Okay. We could bake this now and make it a um, texture that we could apply to this one. But then how do we proceed? Or no, I actually want to... Oh, this, is, this doesn't work. Or it would work, but it's... It's uh, not on my level. It's above my level. <laughs> So the next step would be to figure out the scale variance or the the uh, the proportions between the multiple. Can we? Hmm. Because that's that's the problem. We cannot. The scale is different on the x-axis, which means they're stretched out. Which means if we move it, the scale. Wait. I have an idea. Which ones are these? Uh, there you go, that's... Okay, so this one, what if we go in here, use a... Um, multiply by 0.08? Is it that one? 0.08. Then we have one more for um, what's the next state scale? We have one for 0.08 right here. Wait, they're all 0.08? No, they're not. Uh, this one's zero. That doesn't make sense. Scale zero. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, okay. That's interesting. But oh, how do you exist? Oh, I know how do you how you exist. But well, doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, I, I don't even need to change you, so you're not you don't really matter. You matter, which is point eight. You matter as well. This one, do you matter? No, you don't. You matter, right? Yeah, you matter. So I can get rid of those. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. Okay. Let's kind of reduce this now and that we, that we know what we're doing. Hopefully we know. Do we need you? No. We need you though. Okay. Next up we have the, these ones. Do we need you? Nope. We don't need you. 
we actually didn't need to use the brick uh, <laughs> the brick texture but now we're here now we're gonna use it we don't need you we only need you right yeah okay do we need you oh this one's already disconnected wait why are you disconnected what are you for oh okay I need you, definitely. But you're not even connected. Why are you disconnected? What What do you have? 512? Oh, this will be annoying. Well, I can use a reroute, I guess. What do we have here? 512? There you go. Dude, why? Okay. 512. What do you have? What are you important? You are, okay. And you are connected. Perfect. And then we have you. We don't need you. Do we need you? Yeah, we do. And you are connected. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. We cleaned house. There's one more connection. Where's this? And there you go, all the way down here. Ah, there you go. There's some more. Yep, we don't need you. Okay, perfect. So we actually don't need 5 1. Be gone. Okay. So now, let's see if that actually works. So what I want to do now is I want to multiply the value 1 by the scale that we've applied to the texture. So for 4, 8, 2, that would be 0.8. Oh, it's all 0.8? That doesn't make sense then. Why are you... Why are you complaining then? Point oh eight point uh point oh eight. Why do that doesn't make sense. I'm confused. I'm confusion. Uh, well, let, let's just try what. Let's see what happens. Oh, hold on. There we go. Oh. Wait. It works. Hey, hold on. But what is this? Why are you there? What are you doing there? Oh, I know why. What? Which one does this? Um. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to remove them. The same happens there. So we have to figure out where these ones are. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I changed now, but it works now. So um, I'm happy. Okay, so we have to get to which ones? The bottom row. So which is not this one? This one? Hmm? Do we need you? No, we need horizontal lines. Do we? This one we need. So, no. What do you do? Yeah, but... Why is there white extending over there? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, wait, because I'm on the wrong one, right? Yeah, I'm on the wrong one. I need horizontal lines, okay. 
dude, this is so annoying. I'm never gonna be a <laughs> procedural, uh, I don't know, artist, I guess. want to talk oh there you are okay ah that's the problem ah easy fixed at least the first half wait yep that's uh, this one's the next one I guess yep see ya okay perfect now this one's fixed now we have to do the other side aha I guess we can just just look for um, this one. No, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we have to add another one here that we can move over here to remove these. Aha. Perfect. So now we have one more, which will be the upper one, which is, uh, where is, the, where is that one? Nope, that's not the one that I went looking for. This one? Aha, there you go. Now here we have to go in here. And add another one, another black over here. And there you go, we fixed it. The biggest problem is... Um, what we could do now is we could... Make this probably more accurate by... Using a converted math node, multiplying it by... What is it? Um, 0 0.08. Which should, in theory, perfectly move these. I can't really, uh, you know, test that though. One, two, three. Oh, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Well, that's worse than before. Well, that doesn't work. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, I basically want to... If this piece here... I want to basically create steps that then lets me basically do this. But you can see a small little move to the right side. So what I have to fix is this movement, which shouldn't be a big problem by just, I guess, changing this. Does it go over or under? It goes over. So 0.998. No. 0.99. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I can just do it like this, right? Yeah, I can. That was bad. Aha! We fixed it. Sort of. Easy. Oh, hold on. 
Oh, I know what I can do to really perfect it. Um, I need to bring it back to zero. And then I bring in a cube that I put right on here. There you go. And set this... No, I'm going to keep it like this. Actually, I can't. I need to set it to... Um, wired view. Otherwise, I don't really see it. There you go. Problem is... Oh, I can still see it. Okay. That should be close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Why not? Why not go closer? There you go. Okay. So now I have to go all the way back to here and then change the value so that it fits perfectly on there. Oh, 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 oh. nine. Nope. Eight, no, seven, nine. Almost, 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 almost. Almost, almost, almost. Um, seven. That should be perfect. Point nine eight nine six eight. Why? Why that's the value? I don't really know, but <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay, perfect. So now we can uh, move it. Okay, so now we have to put it into here. What we also have to do is we would have to adjust the... Wait. I want to try something first. Um, okay. Well, this works as well, but I'm going to show you the concept. I don't think we can finish the whole thing today, but I want to just show you the concept. And then if you want to elaborate on it, you can do that. So. So now what you can do is you can go in here if you separate this so that's the idea basically we create we use this gradient now to apply these you know we basically you we apply one two three four of these textures or stripes or whatever you want to call them to each one of those or you know four one for each of these gradients or gray tones and then we can use a texture, I mean a mapping node, to move each individual one of these. Which means, to do that in theory, would be to go in here and... Oh, yeah, yeah. Separate this, separate this, separate this, and separate this. So now we can go in here. Nine eight seven, I don't know, maybe zero. We can do one and three, and now we have three one oh seven. Ta da! <laughs> um, I'm. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can paste it onto one of these uh, pieces, then it should work quite well, or quite easily. So yeah, let's do this, which means we need to copy all of this, 
copy maybe except for this can i exclude this again please let me exclude it there you go i need to re re um change my batteries for my headset hold on see if we can paste it on there we need to copy all this paste it in here <laughs> there you go okay and then we can move this out of the way okay and now we can use this as the mask so we want to put this let's see so how does this look on this plane oh okay that's pretty good so what we have to do is we have to change the I mean, yeah, but yeah, yeah, okay, I have an idea. First things first, we need to go in here and what I want to do is basically, I need to make this wider so that there can be four pieces in here. So probably like this big. That should work, maybe even less, maybe like this. Let's keep it here. There you go. Then what I want to do is I want to... Almost, we're almost there, we're almost there. It's not that much, I think. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, Okay, um, yeah, yeah, I know, I know the way, 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 I know the way. so now what do we have to do, let me, let me, can we, no, let's, let's just not do that, what is this here, we don't need you, okay, <laughs> so, um, yeah, 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 I have an idea, I have an idea, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, move the whole thing this texture i need to duplicate it <laughs> wait, 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 wait. okay We need to have this four times, <laughs> but we're going to use it later. <laughs> we're going to work on this now. Um, okay, so... <laughs> this is so dumb. Okay, um, so what we could do <laughs> now is we can basically just create a mask for the first one, for the second one, for the third one, and then we can add them together. Okay, let's do this now. Um, okay, so we need a... Um, we first need to move it. So we don't destroy this multiple, multi whatever factor. We add another one. Um, convert a math. Before or after? After, right? No, before. Do we even have the choice to do it before? Nope. Okay. So now what we can do is we can move it. There you go. Perfect. So this is perfectly in, in place right now. Is it? Yeah, it is. It, it is. It is. Perfect. And what we can do now is we can just go in here into the small mask right there. Use another, I guess, um, multiply mask. Put that in there. And then we... <laughs> We can uh, do just the exact same that we've done before. And there you go, now we have the seven. <laughs> okay. 
That's the first letter, which means now, if we... Hold on, is that at one? It looks like it's lower. Oh no, oh yeah, yeah, okay, now it's at one. So now we can actually still use this value to move it. Oh, we don't. Why not? That doesn't make sense. Oh, wait. Oh, I did the wrong thing. We need to change this. Aha. Easy. Yep, perfect. That's the first one. Oh, there's a slight mistake. There you go. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> yep, let's do it. I'm thinking about something. Can we just use one of those trees or do we have to use four? I think we have to use four. Yeah, we do. We do. Maybe not, but in I don't want to think about it too much. Okay, let's do the next one. This one actually has to move the exact same amount. There you go, which we can then use by uh, using another node of this one. Put it over here. Plug the mask in there, please. There you go. And there you go. <laughs> That's the second one. Perfect. Okay. Let's add another one. <laughs> no, we can add those together now. Uh, well, that's the problem. Hold on. I need to pull it down so I can actually see it. There you go. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. We need two more. We need two more. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Which means we need uh, this one again. The whole big boy. We move him down. <laughs> okay. I wonder if there's a note counter somewhere. Okay. Probably still not like a lot, but you know, it's a lot for me. Okay. The biggest that I've ever created. My masterpiece. Okay. Okay, so we have this letter now, or this number, which needs to be a little bit more over to this side. Let's add them right now, so we can actually see how, where it needs to be. Okay, perfect. So we have to move this one just a little bit more over.
That's the wrong bot. That's the wrong one. Is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go some more. What is the what is what was the number for this one? This one had negative point oh two. So this one's point oh two. Okay. There might be a big spot in the middle, but that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Okay. That's the third one. Save it right there. Okay. And we need one more, so we can just duplicate this one again. Okay, <laughs> let's do it once more. Plug it in right away. We can probably also group this if you want to make this more, I guess, understandable. But uh, that is not what we tried to do here right now. We only want to make the concept work. We don't. We don't want to make it look beautiful. Okay. At least that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna decide. There you go. Okay, let's um <sighs> Can we now just group all of this? Can we? We can probably, right? We can. We can we can group the letters. We can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so everything except this. I don't need you. Everything else I need. Yeah. Okay, how do I group it again? Control G. Aha. Okay, so we need to put in a value right here. I just grab this one right here and then plug it in here. So we have the value right there. I'm gonna set a value for the group. Where's my, where's anything? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. So the value is going to be... Can we name the value? Tool, node. Have to go inside, right? Group. Yeah, there it is. Name. Number one. So this one will connect to the first number, which is actually down here, right? This one? This one, yeah, yeah. So the, the default value is, I guess, 0.3, we could say. What about, let's set it to one. So negative 0.3, negative 0.3. Which means we can plug that in now, in here. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, I know why. Oh, I know why. There you go. Wait, what? Why is it? What? That doesn't make sense. Huh? 
It's the exact same number, but it's a, it doesn't... What? Why does it display... Oh, I, get, I think I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Next one. We need four more, so we're gonna we're gonna just create this here. Converter math. We need it here, right here, and right there, which we'll call number three. Oops, <laughs> we need number two first. Then we need number three. Number three and number four. We put them all to negative point three as the standard. Negative point three. Negative point three. We're just gonna connect them and then we can still move them if we need to. <coughs> so this one's number one, this one's number two, if I remember. Let's go out first and change all these values to negative point three, negative point three, negative point three. We still have to figure out what the maximum is, but we can do that in a second. So yeah, here we go. Hmm? Okay, hold on. What? Okay, apparently this one's negative point four. What? Okay, interesting. Oh, I know why. Because it moves over here instead of there. Moves one one step. Okay, this one's number uh, two. Where's number three? Is that number three? I think that's number... Yeah, yeah, that's number four. If I remember correctly. Let's see. This one should be number four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number four. Yep, yep, yep. What's the default value? Negative 0.6. There you go. And then once more. This one will be negative point. Five, right? Yep, and there you go. We've done it. <laughs> In a pretty stupid way, probably, but it works. Well, da, 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 da. And we can also, okay, this one has to be 0.6 to the maximum. And Negative point three is the minimum. Minimum negative point three point six, right? Yep. Perfect. Hell yeah. Okay, let's do the next one. Negative point four is the minimum. Negative point four and point seven. Oh, point six. Really? Okay. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, I guess. Point six then. Really? We're still going higher. Maybe even more? Five. Oh, 0.5. Okay, okay, okay. 0.5, and there you go. We have the second letter finished. There you go. Perfect. Save that. Welcome back, Matthew. Sorry if you wrote it uh, 
a while back. I was a little, little bit concentrated. Um, we've been working on this digital clock that we've just finished, or almost. We uh, would need to add these two dots in the middle there as well. But I don't know if I want to do that today. It shouldn't be a big problem though, so we could do that. Yeah, it shouldn't take long. Um, yeah, let's do the next two and then we are done with these numbers. The minimum is negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 and then... Wait, what is that? Oh no. Okay, we have to change something real quick. Number three, right? Yeah. So this one. Change the mask. There you go. See, that's what we've done today. <laughs> this monstrosity of a mask fiesta, basically. <laughs> So in its essence, it's pretty simple, but it's, so let's say, so, okay, it's basically, you could use, um, so you could build a house, like a, you know, you could build a house out of, I guess, bricks, or, what, which would be the smart way, or what I've basically done here, is I would, I ha I built the, um, I built a house with, uh, I guess, pebbles. <laughs> Probably the stupidest but simplest way to create letters, um, basically. So the, the essence is basically every one of these strings here creates one of these. So every one of these strings creates this line. These lines are basically just gradients that create masks, that create these, um, these bars. So we've built these bars first. Um, and then now we combine them into the actual clock. Um, I know you can't really see through this. I actually can't see through this as well, but it works. So <laughs> that's all that matters. Um, yeah, let's, so I'm, I'm going to finish the, um, finish the whole thing and then we, maybe we can talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so what's the, so what, what do we need here? We need 0.3. No, the maximum is 0.4. There you go. So that should work now. Yep. Perfect. Now we have the last one. Negative 0.6. And then we have, what is the maximum? Oh. Oh, it is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, there you go. So now we can move these and we can see, we can slide them to whatever you need. We can even go in steps, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, da, 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 da. set the number to whatever we need. And then we can also, well, we can, Yeah, we can change these numbers. There you go. And then... Go. So now we have the letters. We can, you know, customize those if we want to. What we can also do now is we can create these dots in the center. We can see right here, we have these two dots. I don't know when I use dots though. I think I want to use, um, you know, the same shape. Um, so let's add those as the last piece of the uh, of the whole thing, which shouldn't be a big problem. So we basically just do the same that we've done before, which means I need to grab one of those. Is it this one, the mask? What does this look like? I don't want to do this. I'm just going to copy it and then add it and then see if that's the right one. Copy, paste. Okay. You know what? Why not? I'm just going to look at it. 
Okay, this one works quite well. So yeah, that's basically the whole concept. Basically just masking out where we should see the the number or the, the bar and where we should we should by just moving this. The way that I use it is just by using a gradient and then a constant color ramp to create these you know solid bars. And there you go. Now we need to add a little bit more to this. Oh, which is already here. There you go. We don't need all of this. Oh, we don't need you. We just need to pull you forward. There you go. Make them a little bit smaller. There you go. And over here as well. And there you go. Now, if we add this by adding another add node, we have these dots as well. We can even automate them so that they could be on or off which uh, I don't want to do. Actually, it should be pretty simple by just, wait. No, is it? I guess, no, maybe not. I don't know, I don't want to do it. Okay, let's get rid of this. Tim viewer, wait, where are you? Oh, there you are, there you go. And there you go. Oh, they're too big. Oh no, we need to change them. Okay. There you go. Let's do some adjustments here. Okay, hmm, that's too thin. Hold on. Five, oh my god, okay, one, nine, two, that's too much. One, no, one, one, nine, one, nine, five. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between the two. I guess we can only move them that far. I guess I'm just gonna keep it at 0 0.1, 5199, 5199 doesn't really, oh, okay, now it does. Sometimes it changes it and sometimes it doesn't. Maybe I'm too fast. <laughs> or the value is just too small now. Seems like the value is too small. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it, keep it like this. Although it's kind of tilted now or move to the one side. Let's keep it like this. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, there you go. Now we have a group for a digital clock. That only works on this plane though. So, you, you know, that's the thing. But we can't change really. I mean, what happens if we apply this to another plane? What is this called? Let's call it clock. Oh, 
Oh. Wait, what? Oh. No. Wait, what? Why does it look like this? What happened here? Something is weird. I don't really know what. Oh, now it works. What? Apparently that's something with the UV because it's just too small, I guess. There you go. Haha. Easy. <laughs> okay. It works. Perfect. Okay. Yep. That's it. We, we've done it. We can actually now use this as a uh, mask. So let's do that now. Um, or no. But there was a video that I saw. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This one here. Well, that looks weird. Object. Incoming. Yeah, I don't want to see your demonstration. How does it work though? Please show me. Oh, that's quite a lot of uh, stuff right there. This looks cool. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That's going to be way too much work. I don't even know how to do it, really. I can show you what I'm looking at. Hold on. So that's what I wanted to try, actually, to create. This. It's just a plane. If you move your camera, you can see the parallax effect. And that's just a, uh, there's just the texture, which is pretty crazy. See, the other one doesn't really change the geometry, but the other one does because it's, uh, you know, it's semi 3D or it's fake 3D. The only problem is I don't really know how he set it up and I don't want to, you know, go through, through the whole hassle and doing it. Um, you know, doing or Re recreating this um, so yeah oh wait that's the only thing you need no inner outer oh oh there's another group okay well that's that's gonna be too much I guess Yeah, parallax power and then zoom. Yep, it's to... Uh, there's even more in this group, which you can't see. I don't think he goes into the group. Does he? That's the whole group. That's the group, there you go. See? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that again. Floor, floor, floor. Well, it seems pretty simple. Wait, it only needs two? Wait, 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 This seems to... Parallax strength, scale. What is scale? Subtract. Oh, that's not scale, right? What is that? That's scale. What is scale? Is that a vector displacement thingy? Multiply, subtract. We could try it. No. Oh, I remember. I forgot that there's a group. But what does the group do? Did 
Texture coordinate. What is what does the group do again? See, that's the parallax that I wanted to add. So we can put the numbers on behind um, glass, basically. What is the what is the naming on these uh, nodes? I can't see it. Zoom. It's zoom and the other one. Okay. Well, parallax mapping, window shader, parallax mapping, hold on. Okay, texture coordinate, geometry, top layer, bottom layer. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere. Hold on. <laughs> okay, let's try it. Let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. Okay, so we need... Okay, 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 okay. So now that we have the texture, we don't need you. And we have the other one. Let's fix, I mean, let's adjust this one right now. I guess the only thing that I wanna basically do is go in here and change it to glossy. Uh, specularity, what is that? So, hold on. Subsurface, specularity, roughness needed, not needed. But why is it not glossy now? Did I do something wrong? Oh, metallic as well, I guess. To make it glossy, but that's not really the glossiness that I wanted. Let's add a um, HDRI for a second. Um, there you go. So now we can see it. which means it is still not there. Let's use it how we... Oh, I know how. We need to use a texture. Hold on, let me grab the texture that I always use. You guessed it. The fingerprint texture. We're going to put that into the alpha. And we're going to use a color ramp to make it visible. Which doesn't work. Oh, it does. There you go. Let's use a, a texture object. The yo now looks that's better. Change the scale. Perfect. Okay. So now, if we combine this with this one, that should work. So what do we need for it? Uh, what do we need? We need what is the texture coordinate? Can we, hmm, no, we cannot use a, we 
I want to use a. Wait, where does it? Where do you put the texture? You can. Okay. So you can only use images. Okay. Let's use textures first, um, if that's the only way to do it. Wait, but that does that means I can't really use this on here because it's not a texture. I don't have to put the vector somewhere. Let's see what happens if I just use this. What does it look like? Oh yeah. Um, this won't work. Oh, dude. We need to alpha map um, or alpha images. Which, of course, doesn't work. Let me understand this. It basically pushes it down, right? Bottom layer, top layer. Yeah, the top layer just stays where it is. UV. Yeah, and then the other one goes down. <coughs> Pretty simple. Then, how do we move it down if there's no... Which, which vector... No, 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 this will bit get too complicated here. <laughs> I don't want to go through this again. I think that's sort of where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna end it. I mean, we, we, we you know, we, we, uh, we got to the end. So that's, uh, you know, that's all we need. We could maybe. Can we? Mm, don't think so. Let me Google one more thing. Parallax shader effect for shader shaders. Holographic cards. Super pallor parallax. Hmm. So okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, I wanted to see if I can create some sort of glass on top of it. I don't think I can. Let's see what happens if I mix these together. Or I can use this as a mask, shader, mix shader, put that in there. No. I use this, put it in the in there. I can then use this later. What I do here first is I use a um, shader glossy, not glossy. I need um, diffuse and emission. Okay, so we have diffuse here, perfect black like this. And then we have emission right here, which we're going to set to orange or red. Orange looks pretty good. Okay, what is does this work in Eevee as well? It does, of course, because it's so stupid, easy, stupidly easy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go back in here. I don't need you world anymore, your world lighting. 
Okay, I need some bloom though, because I want to see it glow. There you go. I'm gonna hide you. Where are all these planes? Oh, there they are. Clock. Okay, so now this glows actually. Let's decrease these. Oh no, we can increase the strength. World object. Maybe two, two, three. There you go. Um, now what I want to do is I want to get in here and add another one to this, which will be oh, loading. There you go. This one will go in here and you I'll use diffuse again. Put that in there. And then use <coughs> this in here. <coughs> they should put some dirt on um, on the whole thing. Oh, that doesn't work, of course. I'm dumb. And there you go. <laughs> it kind of works, but I want to increase the strength. Why do you always have to recalculate? That's kind of annoying. It froze. There you go. Maybe change the mapping a little bit. There you go, move it, rotate it. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. There you go. Um, we have some dirt. Hell yeah. <laughs> it, the only thing that it's not is it's not reflective, which we could change, but not really. Because that would mean, can we do this? Well, we could change this to a glossy node. Please, just let me do this. Come on, load. I need you to load. I just need you to... F yeah, done. Why is it white? There you go. So now, which means, hopefully, if I grab a good old, uh, what could we use? Can we see reflections in there? I don't think we can even. So we have to go back to cycles to see it. Which means we can use a world uh, thingy here. And there you go.
there you go. Easy peasy. Nothing easier than that. <laughs> okay, so now we can go in here and we have all these values. So we can say, oh, well, what time is it? What time is it right now? 2354. 20. Three. Oh, we have a problem right there. That's bad. Why is it scaled like that? Well, who cares? 23. Fifty. Four. Yep. Something's weird in here, but that's uh, not none of our business. It works, and that's all that, that we need to see. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what, what happens there. Why is the four so stretched? And the two so weird? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, who cares? This one works. Why is the middle one so, so weird? No, this one works as well. Why is it so... Why was it so scuffed in the rendered view? I guess that's just a rendered error. I guess, I guess, I guess. So let's set it again. 23. See how it's just scuffed? Hmm, that's weird. Hmm, who cares? 1, 2, 3... 23.55 and there you go <laughs> we have a animatable clock easy <laughs> took us how long three hours but at least we got it perfect um yeah i mean if you want to go in here we can probably you could probably make this easier or you can you know make the whole thing more streamlined but it works, and that's all that I care about. So, um, you know, that's all that matters. And it's actually pretty simple. It's just, you know, defining these stripes here up top, defining these ones, and all, all the other stuff as well. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, number plate. Perfect. We did it. We did it. We finished it. And I think it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty, uh, pretty, pretty neat. This one is quite a little bit off center, but I think that's not too bad. Um, yeah, we actually did it. I had an idea on how we could do it and it worked. Um, I'm not the best at uh, nodes, but I think this in particular wasn't super complex. It was more about repetition because you just have to define basically a uh, row of numbers, you know, this row of numbers, so that you can then just apply them to here and apply some masks that they are separate. So you basically duplicate the mask to do this. Yeah, and that's it. Oh, we could... Yeah, there's probably a way to make it so that this is even smaller. So that we... Only need... Um... Wait, where is it? Where's the mask for... Oh no, we don't need the mask. We don't need to go in here. Do we? Wait, 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 something's weird or something's missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can probably streamline this piece here. We can probably create one of these masks to include all four of them. But I don't want to. So, you know, we've done what we wanted to do. And that's all we need to do. And now we can, we have an animated, animatable uh, clock. Perfect. Oh, 
Okay. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. It was definitely a learning process for me. Maybe it was for you as well. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to go into um, how to sculpt like Demon U4, I guess you could pronounce it. Demon U4. Demon U4 underscore on Instagram. He has a very iconic or very, very unique art style. And we're going to try to recreate his art style with, you know, a new character. We're going to try and do, re, you know, just re-sculpt one of his characters. We're going to actually create a new character. In his style just to kind of you know study his style and kind of see how if we can you know get close to his style that's going to be tomorrow's topic and that's going to be the last topic for today's or this week yep so hope you enjoyed today thank you for joining thank you for watching thank you for chatting thank you for being here and yeah maybe i'll see you next time until then take care <laughs>